when, when he called for second, nobody's making seconds, so I'm making seconds, because it, <laughs> let's get this thing moving. Okay? The whole thing was the budget came out ahead of time. It was a $21 million budget. Wow. And of the $21 million budget, all of the income that they estimate from printing and all that good stuff, the county assessment for the entire county, when it was divvied up, was like $6 million and change, and that got divvied up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Wednesday, July 25th, 2018. This is your regularly scheduled Board of Selectmen's meeting, even though we're on a bi-weekly schedule. This meeting is uh, being recorded, both audio and video. It will be played live on Channel 9. There will be playbacks on Channel 9. We will also place this on YouTube for your viewing. At this time, uh, I call the meeting to order, if I didn't already, and let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, while we're standing, I would like to mention the passing of Frances Betty Crawford. I think most of us knew her as Betty Crawford. Uh, Betty lived on the corner of Pine and Center Street. Uh, this is a lady who saw a need in town and took action. She recognized the need for a public water supply. The north end of town had public water. Uh, the rest of the town had to rely on wells, and quite often they went dry in the summer. She's actually considered to be the founder of the original Dighton Water District because when she recognized the need, Based on her own needs, when the, their well went dry, and she used to have to carry water from the Segregancet River on Center Street for their needs, uh, she actually called a meeting of interested citizens, and this got the ball rolling for the Dighton Water District. And when the town celebrated its 300th anniversary, there's this, there is an article in there that Betty wrote. Uh, it's kind of humorous, I think it's on page 89. Uh, but the Dighton Water District recognized Betty as being the sole surviving participant of the first Dighton Water District meeting. The other thing I will mention about Betty is she was a graduate of UMass Amherst. She was very active over at the Aggie School and with the 4-H clubs. And Betty, I'm sure this is going to mean a lot to you because I'm sure you've said it many times. This is the 4-H pledge that she spent a lifetime working with young people in the 4-H club. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. And in Betty's memory, I ask for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Our condolences to Mrs. Crawford's family and friends. So tonight, the first thing on the agenda, we have some special guests. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we have a presentation by the regional school district uh, on the proposed modular uni units set to um, hopefully go into Dighton Elementary School. Uh, we have school committee chairwoman Eliza Kucha here. Thank you. Um, Superintendent Dr. Azar and building manager uh, David Nappi. So thank you all. And at this time, whoever wants to come up, you have the, the dais. And thank you. Hold them or a seat. <laughs> Whichever you prefer, Dr. Azar. The floor is yours. <laughs> if you don't mind. Not at all. But you realize there's nothing in front of you to protect you. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> My left side, the blind side, I, I see a podium <laughs> uh, helping me out. And Dan, Nancy and I go way back, uh, all, the, all the way to four years ago when I first started. So. <laughs> they shoot at you, they may hit me. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think we're going to be all right because okay. it's nothing but good news. Okay. Uh, actually exciting news. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the uh, Regional School District, thank you for inviting us uh, this evening. Uh, we have just a, a wealth of uh, information uh, on a number of fronts. 
uh, that impact Dighton uh, as well uh, within the regional school district. Uh, as you uh, most uh, readily know, uh, we were able to pass an override uh, in the town of uh, Rehoboth. Uh, Rehoboth is catching up to Dighton, and let me uh, phrase why. Um, in the last year and a half or thereabouts, uh, the Rehoboth town has uh, voted for two debt exclusions and an override. And that typically uh, happens in Dighton, kind of like you blink your eye. And, and you know, one thing I want to make sure that the uh, Dighton folks understand that we do not take the town of Dighton for granted because of that. Uh, there are uh, mountains that have to be moved at times. Uh, there, there are a lot of things going on uh, as well. Uh, you folks have, uh, you know, the uh, infrastructure, you've been working on it for, for years and it, it, it's just getting better and better uh, with the uh, addition of our town administrator uh, from a governmental standpoint. Uh, you just can't go wrong there. Uh, so that's, that's exciting news for the town of Dighton, obviously. Uh, we're here tonight to talk, obviously, about the modulus. And as you know, in the numerous discussions, and we've had quite a few mm -hmm. uh, about uh, modulus and, and what the uh, enrollment looks like in, in Dighton and you know, uh, just an array of uh, issues that have come forward. Uh, but the big what ifs uh, really have been removed because of the override passing. If you recall, uh, the budget that you folks uh, passed without a blink of an eye, uh, 10 million plus uh, dollars, uh, that put three additional teachers at Dighton Elementary School, but no place to put them uh, at the time. Uh, now with the override uh, passing, we have three uh, uh, classes that uh, will be uh, uh, student-friendly, uh, environmentally sound. Uh, we just have to create it now out, out, um, you know, in the uh, parking lot. So with that in mind, we've always discussed, we meaning the uh, regional school uh, district, uh, in, the, in our capital committee uh, approximately two and a half years ago, we talked uh, quite extensively about uh, whether or not we would get modulars or brick and mortar. So, so that was a discussion, if you don't mind, if I can just kind of go back talk, historically, not too far back, because it's only a few years, uh, and I'll, I'll try to not be too verbose. I can do the ancient stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. Nancy will right, interject <laughs> as, as needed. Uh, but I think it's important for folks to know that this is not a topic that you folks in Dayan or we at the regional school district have just swept under the rug and looked the other way about our enrollment. If you go back a, f a, few, a couple of years, uh, you, you afforded us uh, to reconfigure our Dayan Elementary School to try to get two additional classrooms, which we did. That was at, I think, $110,000, $120,000. That was not just a Band-Aid, that was a, a, that was a that was substantial, and, and that's what we did. But that was really to get us over the hump, to get an understanding through our capital committee about <coughs> building, uh, 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 building a capacity uh, to try to alleviate what the enrollment will look like going forward. And as you recall, we tried to uh, reduce our budget a few times. We reduced it to a point where we did eliminate some classrooms uh, to try to configure it. But as we were doing that, the enrollment uh, from outside increased, and it increased within. So we, we, we had some early childhood uh, classrooms on the Dighton side, and, and also Rehoboth as well, some of their kindergarten classes just ballooned to, to the low to mid-20s. And I remember uh, the fateful day on March 2nd, which is Dr. Seuss's birthday, I was invited to a kindergarten class, and there were 25 kindergarten students in front of me and one teacher. And it was just remarkable what the kids were able to do, but it was also not conducive to an education that you want, uh, you know, the 25 uh, students to have uh, because it was just too many kids in, in that particular classroom. But nevertheless, as we go forward, and, and we have gone forward, uh, we got to a point where in our capital committee, we talked about brick and mortar, or we talked about modulus, and, and two or three years ago, we were talking about 10 to 12 classrooms. That's what we originally talked about. But the cost factor, where was it coming from? And you folks were just starting to talk about the police station and the library and some other things. And just like on the Rehoboth side, and um, you know, bear with me when I bring in Rehoboth as well, because we are a school district. And obviously, as you saw with the budget, it's, it's very impactful uh, between the two towns. But we also saw on the Rehoboth side, they were trying to expand out with a uh, municipal complex 
uh, that was not, uh, it didn't go, you know, that vote. And then the schools did the debt exclusion and it passed. Mm -hmm. Then there was you know, some animosity, like, oh, the schools always get everything. Uh, and, and that's not necessarily always the case, but it just seems that, like that was happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we fast forward. We come to a point where an override is passed, uh, the impact that $3.5 million uh, reduction that we were working on within our administrative staff led to approximately 105 layoff notices. And now we're in the process, as you know, of rescinding all of those la layoff notices. But what people don't understand is that uh, aside from the torment, uh, the, the emotional torment of giving people 105 layoff notices, to try to rescind them is not, that, is not as easy because we, we were dealing with four associations, four different ways through the collective bargaining agreement on how to bring people back. So in some instances and in most instances, it's a, a registered letter, two weeks to decide. We have to identify what position we're calling people back uh, at. So the uh, override took place on July 17th. It passed on the 18th. We had a school committee meeting. We talked a little bit about it. And then by uh, July uh, 19th, we had all of our registered letters out in the mail, uh, which was an additional cost. As you know, they're, they're roughly close to $7 per, and we had 80, about 87 or so. So that was not budgeted for us. So, that's, so we, we, we start off a little bit behind, but nevertheless, we'll, we'll definitely catch up. So, so we'll, and the reason why I share that publicly with you folks is to just give an indication that we are moving forward, we are doing what we said we were doing, but it takes a, a little time. But we do have a little time because September is another month and a half away to begin school. So we hope by the end of uh, the middle part of next week that all the teachers are back where they need to be. Um, to, the, to, to my knowledge, there are a couple that are still thinking about uh, other job offers with, which they received. And, there's no animosity towards those folks because of the Yanks created family situation, so, so we get it. We hope everyone stays on board, but so far the majority of, of, of staff members who did receive a layoff notice have uh, responded back to our, our um, uh, letter of rescinding, and uh, we're, we're going to be in a good place. Okay, so with that all in mind, uh, what we're uh, proposing and what we've proposed a number of times um, our school committee was presented and uh, they uh, picked the bid that was in front of you. And I think, I think from the, the town side and from the school district, we're, we're all on a, in agreement that six classrooms does the following. Uh, the temp I'm sorry, six temporary classrooms does the following. It gives us, meaning the district and the town, an opportunity, we're talking roughly three to five years. So when we say temporary, it's about three to five years. It could be as early as three years or it could be as late as five years. We don't see it going past that. And what is it that we don't see past that is the following. Uh, we believe that we have two parallel uh, pieces going on here. Number one is a statement of interest that we're going to present to the MSBA uh, that does the roofing and they, and they will do a, a study based upon what we need to come in, but we, what we're also going to do is a, a district-wide piece as well. So MSBA statement of interest will be uh, for the uh, Dighton campus. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't open until around April. Mm -hmm. That's when they ask for the statement of interest. The second piece is that we belong to what is known as NESDEC. It's not the, um, the, the stock exchange. Uh, I don't have the, um, uh, anyone can just Google it right now. New England uh, School Development Council. There it is, Nancy. <laughs> history. History, it's all about history. I'll do the old stuff. Right, so, so we're, we, we are part of that uh, organization and we are reaching out to them to see if they can, uh, uh, not if they can, but they do provide an opportunity for their group to come in and look, they'll be looking, we'll, we'll ask them to look at the entire district. Because if you recall at the town meeting, not the second one, the first one, there was, there was questions about the superintendent in the regional agreement having an opportunity to move Dighton kids to Rehoboth or Rehoboth kids to Dighton. And, and that's not something that people uh, are readily uh, jumping on board for, nor, nor were we, mm -hmm. you know, about displacing kids. And we're only, ta I think we're talking about 15 to 20 kids. Mm -hmm. How do you choose them? Where are they? Who are they? How do you do this? 
okay, we didn't think it was at that crisis level, obviously, nor did we think it was in the best interest of, of the educational uh, pursuits for, for those kids and those, and, and those families. So, so that's, that's impactful. So statement of interest and NEDS that coming in and looking at the entire district space-wise with the emphasis, obviously, on Dighton Elementary School uh, and, the, and Dighton Middle School. Right now, uh, there are some growing pains on the Rehoboth side, but at Palm uh, River Elementary School, we rent out some of the classrooms to the South Coast Collaborative. Mm -hmm. So if we needed to, one thing would be, it would be a year out. I mean, we wouldn't move them in September. That just would not be fair to the Collaborative. And they've been an incredible partner for us, uh, for the district uh, as well. And, and that minimizes our special education costs. And so, so they've been a really good partner. But Rehoboth does have some wiggle room. At the middle school, they have a few classrooms as well that could be utilized. So, so right now, the enrollment crunch really is on the Dighton side, I mean, readily right there in front of us. So these six classrooms will provide us with uh, uh, some breathing room, some breathing space. Three to five years, we'll take care of our needs, we'll have an understanding, we'll have the statement of interest moving in one direction, we'll have NESDEC looking at something else as far as, okay, is it, is it, do we need 10 classrooms at Dighton Elementary School? Mm -hmm. What do we need at uh, Dighton Middle School? Now these um, modulus could also be used futuristically for the middle school following the bumps in the years and, and getting a better handle on the uh, enrollment piece. Mm -hmm. So, so we're, we're, you know, we're, we're excited that the override passed because it took out, and you remember uh, a lot of the questions were, well, what if it, the override doesn't pass? What happens to the three teachers? What happens? So that, in a nutshell, is, is where we're at. That's why you know, we're excite, uh, excited. This seems like the, the final hurdle to move forward on FY 2019. And I think we're in a very, very good place. Our, our school committee is working uh, better than ever with us as an administration. And uh, we, we see really, really great things going on uh, in, in Dighton and Rehoboth uh, for, for many years to come. And that old adage about, oh, the, do we have to ask for an override every year? That is absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we will be working with the town of Dighton and the town of Rehoboth. Uh, as you know, our overarching goals, number one is student achievement. And the second one is to uh, support the financial stability of both of our towns. And, and in discussion with, with the town of Rehoboth, because there was a little backlash that, well, how, how can you, uh, you know, fulfill your second goal of, of sustainability when you want to raise taxes. Well, that was part of the sustainability that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not often that people go out to you know, jump for joy when you're raising taxes. However, uh, it was connected to something very important, the student education. So mm -hmm. that's where we're at. And uh, Dave's here tonight as well. Eliza's here. I'm here. So if there's any questions, mm -hmm. comments, concerns, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll try to answer as best as we can. So Ms. Uh, Selectman Pacheco and I were present at the yep. school committee meeting, so um, I think, you know, we'll give Selectman Goulart the chance to ask sure. questions if she didn't have that opportunity, but I did just want to touch on something that you said because it really, it's true. Um, I have had people uh, before the override ask me um, regarding uh, the, the space at Dighton Elementary, why wasn't that studied before, why didn't they do anything before, and I think it's important that residents understand uh, the environment that you were in at that time where Rehoboth didn't pass the debt exclusion in 2014. I don't mean to go back into yeah, time, but, but it, it didn't look very promising that a building was going to get funded, especially with, as you know, the issues uh, that we had with the, getting the police station project yep. going. So I think the context is really important. Mm -hmm. I think we've turned, we're starting to turn the page on that, both towns, sure. supporting the schools, Absolutely. Um, asking, you know, tough questions because you don't just you know, maybe not on the budget because it did sure. pass pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're always there to answer questions. I know Chairwoman Kucher, you know, is constantly answering questions. So um, I just wanted everybody to understand the context of the environment several years ago. Um, so I think the time is right to, to start um, getting a temporary solution for the, for the crunch, right? We would potentially, if it passes and it's approved at town meeting, we would own the, tri the yeah. modular units. And then if we had issues at Dighton Middle School, we could possibly move them. And I think that's a that's right. a fantastic idea. So that we're not in a crisis mode Long, again. Oh, and over I think, and over. So it's and then at the same time we're planning for doing a study. Is a structure needed? And I think that that 
is absolutely uh, the way to go. So I wanted to commend you both on that. I know it's not easy. Probably you feel it's a thankless job a lot of times <laughs> being on the school committee, but we appreciate it very, very much. And uh, at this time, I'd like to open the floor to you. So I can move um, on. on the page that's big clarification sheet, uh, page two, number 17, the 45 day validity for pricing. Is, are we okay with that? Because the next sheet talks about a schedule and 45 days is, is not gonna be sufficient. So is the price firm, are they willing to do that? I mean, they have to know what you had to go through to get this done. So, like, um, so people can't hear Dave back there, can they? Oh, why don't you come up to the podium? And it's not recorded well. Yeah. Okay, so we would. The first time we have yeah. Thank you, Ms. Nath. Yeah. So, the, so the question was, um, the pricing was good for 45 days, and the schedule that is shown goes back to May. So, is the 45-day pricing going to hold? The 45-day pricing will hold. Um, we did an, an addendum to the um, RFP, and that was uh, based on the need uh, to purchase. So, what we did is we had uh, several contractors that. Uh, met the bid approval, um, so we sent an addendum out them to them to reapply with a, uh, a purchase price. So okay. it, it is uh, it's valid from 45 days from the addendum. Okay, so what we're what we're paying for, we're going to own. This is not a lease. Correct. It's an outright purchase. Outright purchase. They're ours. Period. There you go. Um, what's the total cost? One point. Um, I have that. One point one oh four. So one million one hundred and four thousand dollars. And we've already given three hundred thousand dollars approved three hundred thousand. Three hundred has already been set aside and I have the balances and the accounts we're probably gonna be using. <laughs> so we're good. We have the money. I have a couple of questions on that, but I will defer to you. Okay. Just well, since we're talking about money, uh, do we have funds sufficient to cover this so we aren't doing raise. The only raise and appropriate is the 200,000 that we did at town meeting. Uh, so yes, uh, 200,000 for raise and appropriate and 100,000 came Correct. from free cash. cash. So that's already, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, in the bank, it's, right. it's there. Right. So the, the remainder is about $804,000. Mm -hmm. We have um, $1.5 million in one stabilization count and $1.1 million in another. My hope is mm -hmm. that we take it from a stabilization account and then with free cash, once that's certified, goes back into the stabilization accounts so that we can not, we just wanna have that. It's safe mm -hmm. and you know we can ultimately end up paying for this in free cash. I have so a that question they, about that though, yes. like a logistical question. Sure. Do you have any reservations or, or do, do you, Dr. Azar or Mr. Nappy, about that because as I understand if we're going to take the money, which I'm not, I'm not giving my opinion, we're, we're, I, I want to get this done. Um, my concern would be, do you think we're going to get the two thirds votes that are required? Because I believe it's not just a simple majority. No, I believe it's two thirds, um, yes. But I think the need was established. Mm -hmm. A lot of the reason I was really adamant that the, the school committee come here today mm -hmm. is to lay this groundwork, to ask these questions, to answer, you know, quell any fears, your discussion about what has happened in that short amount of time from Rehoboth passing the override, I think is completely appropriate and helpful for people to realize yeah. that things are moving along. And I just think this is a good step forward to the people so that they know where they're in contact. So I don't personally think that we're gonna have a problem. And I think if mm -hmm. we come to the, the public and say, yep, we're gonna take this out of stabilization, but here's our plan. And um, you know, I think people react well to that. What do we so have in the capital account? The capital one is 1.1. Million okay. and the, okay. the request at this point is eight hundred and four thousand, mm -hmm. but I I do want to just be careful because I've heard there may be a bid protest. Is that happening? Because if there is, I don't want us to be short money. So I want to go up, like authorize up to whatever that number needs to be, so you're not coming back and, and it's just you have your funding and you're just good to go. You could just that's why I'm. So if we could have a conversation about the exact number you're looking for to cover all of our bases, and then we can Are you make sure the article is correct. Pardon me? No, no problem. Are you saying ask for a little bit more than what you need so that there's a, you know, a little bit of a cushion? Right, okay. in, in, just in case. 
Has, uh, when was the meeting that, you, I know it was when I was away. It so was on a Thursday yeah. afternoon, very impromptu. I think it was a Thursday. It might have been a Monday. Yeah, they all seem to be. I know everything. <laughs> what was that? Thank you. <laughs> so we all, you know, jammed together. July? In July. No, June, uh, somewhere. Yes. Very close to the override. It must have been around July the 5th, day after the 4th of July. Not that day. It was the following oh, week. The following, the following week. week. And all of our schedules happened to align. They came in and they discussed both proposals. And the Finance Committee Chairman happened to be here in Town Hall. So he sat in and we had a full discussion, a good discussion, and raised some concerns about apparatus, you know, medical apparatus and fire apparatus going around the building. It was pretty well done. Um, and then they informed us that they had to go to the school committee and get their vote and their recommendation. And that's what happened. And now they're so here. So has FinCom met? Mr. Swatch was there, obviously, but right. the FinCom itself has not. <laughs> Correct. They're waiting to see what the actual right. article is yeah. going to be. Yes. He has been very much informed, and I believe in contact with you, so um, he's aware of everything. And he did go to that yeah. meeting, yeah. so uh, Mr. Swartz knows what's going on. And I've also talked to him. I gave him these balances. I told him that's my preference to be able to know take now but sort of like pay ourselves back later with as much free cash as we can at the special at the at, spe the, at the, in, uh, in october. the yeah, october. october meeting mm -hmm. and so the, you know later on the agenda we're asking because you're asking us to also hold a special town meeting so we'll discuss that yep. um and just for the sake of this conversation we're looking at august 21st um which is as fast as we can go mm -hmm. um but it's also the date that works for everybody mm -hmm. and the schools available so it's a Tuesday. I know normally they're Monday, but um, town council was not available on the 20th. So uh, the 21st mm -hmm. works for Mr. McKeon, the mm -hmm. town moderator, the finance committee chairman, um, and town council. Mm -hmm. And we believe with the town clerk, she's out of the, you know, not available to <laughs> consult with right now. <laughs> but we looked at her calendar and there's nothing on there. And Good. the assistant town clerk was confident she could attend. So I'm a little concerned about giving extra money than what's being asked over oh, here. So, I so how does that work then? I mean, who has the final say as to how much it's going to cost? Because I, we're going to be going before the ta taxpayers, asking for a specific amount of money, which we know what the figure is: 100, uh, 1.1 million, 1.104 million dollars and some and some change. Uh, but now we're going to leave it maybe another two hundred thousand dollars. I'm concerned about going before the townspeople and asking. I agree with that wholeheartedly, and I don't like to be wishy-washy in front of the people they, you know, they need to know. But I don't want to set up the school mm -hmm. to have to come back mm -hmm. because then that's a whole slew of other issues of having another town meeting, getting more money appropriated. So I just want us all to be on the same page now mm -hmm. to know exactly what we need to ask mm -hmm. for so that they can go forward. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, and it's just a rumor. I yeah. don't know. Well, I'm, I'm concerned that we here. we may have another two hundred thousand dollars, and sometimes when you you allocate two hundred thousand dollars more. People see that, and then we'll be seeking that th right. those funds. So I'm I'm really reluctant to give any more than than what's actually being asked. Uh, I, I agree with with uh, Selectman Pacheco. Um, I understand what what you're saying. Also, it would seem in preparing that warrant, we should know for sure what the number, the hard and fast number is. If the hard and fast number is a million two, not a million one. Mm -hmm. Then, when we get to town meeting, there has to be an understanding that the hard and fast number that will be acted on will be, if it's 1.1, it will be 1.1. We will not go to 1.2 because we will amend it to a lower amount on town meeting floor. I absolutely agree that we. This is this is a major capital expense from existing money, and just as we do when we bond uh, with a debt exclusion. It's got to be on the target. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, it's, quite frankly, we don't spend money from stabilization. And to take this to a town meeting and to ask people to vote, even though the money's sitting there, this is a rare event in the town of Dighton. The last time we took money out of stabilization was to do a, um, the master plan, $60,000. I personally oppose that. It was voted, and we were able to put the money back, and the master plan was done. And that's chicken feed compared to what we're talking about. So going to town meeting, it's got to be on the money, you know. And you know, we do already have the 300 set aside. So I know we're throwing out millions yeah, everywhere. It's not draining everything. I, I want everyone to know we're not being flippant about this. Um, 
but and again my I really do I would like to see the town put at least half right back in mm -hmm. in October um, and my, my other concern is is that this is an emergency this is something we got to have done right away and I don't ever want the town to have to go through this quite frankly again I agree that, mm -hmm. you know we had to have somebody at the town meeting <coughs> stand up and make a, a motion that we we provide uh, monies for these modulars and that that shouldn't happen we should know beforehand I understand the context of what happened prior mm -hmm. but you know, we're building, we were building a new police station that costs money, but let the taxpayers make that decision whether or not they want to spend the money to add to the school, put another building or whatever, because now we're spending 1.1 million, which I'm in favor of, of spending that money at this point. Uh, but we still, it's a temporary solution. It's, it's three to five years, as, as you pointed out. We may own these modules, but it's a temporary solution. We should be talking about brick and mortar that if we're going to add to the school. So I, I want to make sure that you as well as the, the Diane Hobart School uh, Regional School Committee is very active in seeing what the needs for this town and we hold with as far as the building needs and uh, are you going to form a committee? Uh, I, I know you, we got to wait till April, uh, but are you going to form a committee uh, or is you going to be asking the school committee to form a, a committee that? Well, I, I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, we had already asked that uh, a year and a half ago to form committees. So what's happened though? Well, I'll tell you what happened. A lot has happened, uh, first and foremost. Uh, we were working out of the Capitol Committee about two and a half years ago. We had a plan in place, but it was sidetracked. And then what we decided to do from there was to send it back to the town of Dighton. We wrote a letter about a year and a half ago to, to form a building committee within Dighton, which happened. Uh, it was about six months later, mm -hmm. uh, it happened later. Mm -hmm. And then that committee, uh, was given a charge that was almost insurmountable. And what they came back with was to, um, they, reckon, they came back with a recommendation, mm -hmm. and then that put us out uh, another year. Mm -hmm. So what we're, what we're doing and what we uh, continue to do is we have uh, the statement of interest. We have, what we'll have to do is find out what it is that NESDAQ will be recommending. <coughs> and then from there, we can see what kind of building committee mm -hmm. that we would do you mind if I piggyback a little sure. bit off what you just said? Yeah. Um, the findings of the school building study committee uh -huh. are exactly in line with what you're actually doing. Right. As I understand, they dissolved the committee, but in their final recommendation, they recommended that the district contact MSBA. So they're actually doing exactly what the committee charged them, what they were charged with. The other thing is um, they were, you know, they started to work on a long-term plan, which is exactly what they mm -hmm. were charged for, and they quickly realized, like everybody else, that there needs to be some sort of a temporary solution, which you alluded to, which is what the modulars are. Um, and at that point, that's when they realized that that was kind of, they weren't charged, you know, they weren't, they weren't equipped to deal with something that needed to happen right away. Um, but, but I just want everybody to know what they decided in the long term is exactly the ball that this district has picked up and is now running with. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So whose responsibility then was it to determine whether or not we need modules? If it wasn't this committee, mm -hmm. who? Oh, that's the, the school district, which is exactly what they've decided, that they needed a temporary solution. So it was kind of like the committee and the district converged and they both agreed on that, but the, the study committee that was formed, I mean, that was just volunteers who weren't really equipped. They were trying to study long term, and so when they realized there needed to be a short term solution, I think they realized very quickly it had to go back to the district. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add anything? Yeah, so Mrs. Kucha. I think the district and the town need to work together. Absolutely. Together. We so had a committee that was working for the district. We did have finance committee members um, from the town involved in that. We had school committee members. Mm-hmm. 
May I ask a clarifying question? The letter of intent is with the MSBA Correct. in April. Did they partner very much closely with the town? Is that right? That they are sort of those experts to help us through? Is that correct? Okay. I just want to make sure that no. we had our experts in the wings that are <laughs> accessible to us. But I, I just wanted to say, I, to be quite honest, I actually like the idea of a district committee more because now you're synchronizing the needs of Rehoboth with the needs of Dighton, and one is not trumping you know, the other. You're kind of working together to see what's possible. Yeah, so I actually like that. Hoping, uh, if I may, uh, share of course. Uh, what we're hoping for is this uh, outside third party vendor sort of saying, who does this regularly for school districts will be part and parcel uh, to both districts to form a committee of local individuals who have you know, commitments to the towns. Mm -hmm. So that's what ultimately what we'd like to see. Mm -hmm. So in reference to uh, Councilman, uh, Councilperson, um, uh, so I, so, oh no, I know the name, I was trying to get the title. <laughs> <laughs> Former Rhode Island State Senator, I'm always thinking, you know, Councilman, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's so people, true. right, so. So are you planning then to form this committee before the April letter, or is this something that happens after that? No, no, actually the statement of interest with MSBA is one track. We'll see how that plays out. The secondary track is more to what you're asking, is that when we bring NESDEC in to work with us to, to try to formulate what it is that I need done, that. then that, what we're hoping is that that's where we'll build a committee of individuals of architects, uh, electrical engineers, uh, from both of our towns. So I think that's in reference And when does that happen then? Oh, middle, that's for, time, um, time actually, time. we hope to bring them forward uh, either at the August 14th or okay. the August 28th meeting. So pretty much as soon as uh, they're available sure. and we're available. So what they'll come in and do a presentation, there is a cost factor that uh, the school district uh, will venture into uh, through uh, the uh, school committee. I can't, I can't sign them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, until they give us uh, the dollar thing. But I think there is an, to what uh, the town kind of administrator was saying, uh, there is an appetite for this. Whereas two and a half years ago, it was like maybe, actually even prior to the first year I was here, uh, there was there was a lot of angst, even with that uh, reconfiguration of Dayton Elementary School. Because if you go back in time, the Time Gazette quoted people who didn't even exist who were against the, the configuration of the, of the uh, school. And I draw that to the attention of the uh, Tom Gazette because I asked, there were two people who were quoted, and I asked them both to come in to talk with us. Come see us, what are the concerns? Mm -hmm. That no, I'm sorry, we can't make it, we can't do this. And then we had some uh, entrepreneur uh, computer people check out who these people were, and they didn't exist. So it was quite unique, but nevertheless, we were able to get through and I think a lot of what we've been able to do on the, on the uh, school side is to, to show folks on both, both sides is that we're consistent. We've never had a superintendent who's going into his fifth year. And I think if you recall at graduation, this was the first graduating class for four years who had the same superintendent, not the same principal or the same assistant principal, but the same superintendent who's been consistent, knows the history, not like Nancy, but knows a little bit of the history that we can now say, hey, wait a minute, no, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing this, and this is where we're going to do it. Uh, and, and then that's part of trying to be transparent. Uh, with the, and that's why we think we were able to pass an override. You know, there's a lot of factors, obviously. A lot of people did a lot of hard work. But if you recall, it was a matter, it was very condensed. It was from June 12th when mm -hmm. we had that school committee meeting, and then it formed this, it formed that. It seemed a little too long, but nevertheless, uh, <laughs> Uh, we get the final outcome. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're hoping for uh, going forward. So, if you don't mind me. No, not Jim. at all. Not at all. Who's going in these modules then? What, what grades are going in these modules? That, that is something that's being discussed at the school level with the uh, principal and the administration and the teachers. Because you alluded to that June 12th meeting. I, yep. I'm not sure. I, it may have been you, may have been a school committee member who mm -hmm. said that it, the pre K in kindergarten was a want and not a need to be going to the elementary school. So what I want to know is, is that part of the plan that pre-K or uh, kindergarten will be going over as a result of these six modules, well, going over to well the- Well, what's happened is creating options for us. So 
the principal of the building, with the assistant principal, will be working on a plan because now this plan, uh, as far as where kids are going to be, we usually send out letters to parents about where their kids are going to be. Mm -hmm. That's still in the works because right now we don't know what we're going to have. You know, if this pack, if it doesn't pass, there's another, you know, the what if. Okay, what if it doesn't pass? Well, then that's what they're working on. What is in the best interest of the kids? And if it doesn't pass, then obviously pre-K is out of the, is not an option. That would stay at the high school. If we have the module is, it creates options. Will this work? Will it not work? And that's something that we, we I'm not a top-down kind of person. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that the people with, who will be the most impacted in that building makes those decisions. But that's at their level. It's really not at, at this level. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll obviously look over the plan and then present it to the school committee, obviously, first. But uh, we, we, we want to make sure that uh, Linda Zur and Ashley Pullen, working with the teachers in that building, what do you think is in the best interest? Because that's the way it's got to work. I don't want to say to them, okay, you have to do X, Y, and Z. That's just not my style. So. My only con I I hope I'm not alone in this. I think m my only concern from what I've heard from you know parents who have kids mm -hmm. at the elementary school is the reason why they support the modulars is because there's already a space crunch. And I would be, I have no say in it, but I would be hesitant to have the pre-K kids, if the modulars get approved, go over immediately into the modular units because I think people will have the perception that part of the reason why people thought they needed the modulars was to get the kids over there. And I think their impression is it's to alleviate a space crunch that already exists. So they're gonna be confused. Why are you, it's simple osmosis, why are you moving kids into a, cr into a space crunch? Uh, so, I mean, I know, I know you, know, you would respond. Like I said, you know, people have to entrust the people who are the professionals to do what's in the best interest of kids. Um, I just know that a lot of parents don't particularly like having their preschool kids at the high school. It's just a, an unfortunate situation because of space. And if we're able, uh, it's got to be considered. I, I don't think we want to take anything off the table and, and be so you know caught up in, in okay, no, we, we shouldn't do that because of, you know, and even if it's in the best, well, this looks like it's in the best interest because the experts are saying, you know something, this works. Or if it doesn't work, or because right now the Rehoboth preschool will be in Rehoboth mm -hmm. uh, come uh, September. We've already, and, and we're not talking a lot of kids. I mean, we're not talking, you know, we're, I think we're, we're maybe in the 30, 30 students or so or thereabouts. So, so it creates options. I don't want to be emphatic to say to you right now because it wouldn't be fair mm -hmm. to the folks at Dunning Elementary School because as we go forward, uh, we don't know what's going to happen at the middle school. Will those modulars then become fifth grade? You know, within the next five years, and the bubble at the elementary school kind of bursts. That's why we need this outside vendor, NESDEC. They do a lot of the enrollment figures that you see in, in our presentations. So it'd be very difficult for anyone to say other than, let's, let's consider all options. And, it, and if it doesn't work out, then there is a place where preschool will stay at the high school. For, you know, for as long as it takes until maybe the bubble will burst, we'll have that opportunity. Because as you recall, I want to say three years ago, when the, the SWAT team was on site at the high school, it was probably, it was just so traumatic that I wore my, 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 uh, my DI jacket, which I've never worn, to make sure those SWAT team members knew that I was actually, you know, part of the, the faculty there, mm -hmm. you know, in the tree lines, the, it was just, it was just traumatic, and this is when kids were being dropped off. We have Atlas training that is not endemic to uh, preschool kids. Uh, we have BP moving their preschool mm -hmm. out of their high school into a new, new building. Uh, the other thing about preschool parents is that they go through the process of being in the high school for one year, and then where do they go? They go to the elementary school, so you don't hear, you don't see a, the place packed with preschool uh, parents because once you know they go through the process and you know they get an all call that uh, we got a lockdown, we got this, and they're like, you know, then of course it, you know, it's, it's just uh, important to realize that 
let, let's let the experts figure out what, what's going to be in the modules. We've all, I think we've all agreed that we, we need something. So, you know, here we are. But it's a legitimate question. There's no question about that piece. Well, I appreciate you yeah. just not, say, you know, saying what you think we might want to hear. So I actually okay. appreciate that a lot. I think, I think the educational theory is fine. I understand it completely. However, the reality of the situation is we went to the townspeople in Dighton and said we have overcrowding at the elementary school. When the preschool was mentioned, the first response that I heard was, are they out of their minds when the house is, you got the house full of your relatives, you don't invite more in. You got to deal with what you've got. So when you think about what it is that was presented to the people in Dighton, we have an overcrowding system at the elementary school. For right now, forget preschool. We're going to talk about what's physically present that's creating this overcrowded situation. There were people who remembered past presentations. We got a bubble. The question was, what if it happened to the bubble? Because it should have been moving along and it should be over at the other school by now. So do we have a new bubble coming along because of increased enrollment? That, so we got it out of the fifth grade and it's now at the middle school or the fourth grade. We got another bubble and now this one's in the lower grades and it's moving forward. The, in looking at what we ask, and I mean everybody, school department, board of selectmen, town officials. What we asked the town uh, people in Dighton to do was to authorize these modular classrooms. So we're going, you know, that's what was presented and we're headed for that for an August town meeting. They are going to want to know, tell us what's going on right now. If down the road, so my personal opinion is, you know what, deal with the problem you have right now, which means for maybe another year, the uh, pre preschool stays where it is. History. Mm -hmm. When the state told us we had to have public kindergartens, what are we going to do in Dighton? Because we don't have any room. Right. It's sitting out here on the hill, okay? That was the solution for kindergarten. And it stayed there until, quite frankly, the junior high burned down and we built a new middle school which gave us room. And that's when we moved the kindergarten into the elementary and mm -hmm. We went with a 4-4 four, four, four system, you know. All of that worked. When you say, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a chance, or there's rumors, or there's something, that we may move the preschool children in, my point is, let it sit for a year. Show the people in Dighton you're going to address the problem you brought before them at town meeting, which was overcrowding at the elementary school. As I said, I understand the educational theory. I absolutely, I understand it. But if you initially, and when I say you, I mean school administration, principals, whatever. When you look at what was presented, to me, deal with exactly what was brought to the people for the first year. You get your modulus. You get space freed up. You got smaller classrooms. You got three teachers. You got a place to put them, and you got a place for the students they're going to teach. In the meantime, you're going to be looking, just like we were umpteen years ago, because eventually, again, those were only temporary, all right? Umpteen years later, we're using them for something else. But the fact of the matter is, there was always that thought, and we were trying to get a new junior high school. And if it hadn't burned down, you know, which was actually a blessing. But in any case, all of these things, when you present them to the townspeople and taxpayers, mm -hmm. and it's kajing. If you don't address the issue you brought forward as this is the main problem we got, overcrowding right now at the elementary school. Well, the good news. That's the thing right. you have to think about. And as I say, it doesn't preclude you mm -hmm. in a future year or whatever, just like we did over here, as the space was determined, we got space, we're going to build that school, we're going to reallocate the grades. That was fully acceptable, simply because initially the uh, school committee did exactly what they said they were going to do, all right? We're going to build that middle school, we're going to move to that fifth grade, we're going to put that kindergarten, talking about the natural progression of childhood education. Absolutely, the kindergarten children belonged in that elementary school. So all I'm saying to you is, the kind of things that you're hearing from my colleagues, 
this is this is general talk out there, mm -hmm. and this is from people who support Correct. and will vote to fund this. Correct. But I'm saying to you, when you go to that special town meeting, don't come in with, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that because that's not what you did. And I'm not picking on anybody, you meaning the, the general you. Mm -hmm. It is not what was done at the annual town meeting, both sessions, until we finally got a solution at the second night. You got to do what you tell the people you're going to do. Mm -hmm. You lose no options for the first year People have to understand you are going to do what you said you were going to do, okay? And as, as you get your study with NESDEC coming in and you send that uh, contact uh, school building, all of this stuff is good because once you get that data from NESDEC, you can then say, and by the way, folks, this is the projection. And what we see happening is, whether it's bringing the preschool now we can do this because we have actual data. Mm -hmm. Residents of Dighton, parents of Dighton, we have the data to show now exactly what we can do. So I just caution you, we're going into a, a town meeting, we're going to need a two-thirds vote to get this money. Correct. So, and I am not trying to interfere with decisions made at the schools, but I'm saying to you, educational progression, absolutely, in a timely manner. So that's all I'm saying to you is because those who support you will continue to support you. And it's really important so that everybody mm -hmm. understands. Mm -hmm. You can still do the looking. You will still have the data. And you're going to have, I'll call it expert research, NESDEC. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's all I'm saying. My, okay? my only thing, Dr. Azar, yeah. we, I, I think, I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but I think we support it. I think the people support it. And I just want to make sure that we're not, you know, clutching defeat from the jaws of victory because I do think there will be people who will change their vote if they found out that there's even the possibility that the pre-K students will be moved over there. Well, I'm just being honest. Okay, the good news mm -hmm. that you should be aware of. If you look at the calendar, we're in late July. If we're looking at the town meeting out by August 21st, by the 21st, we will have we, we will have what we need through the eyes of the Dighton Elementary School folks, and then we can present it as as such. Tonight, you ask me, I can't de be definitive about it. It's an option. It's on the table, and it would be a disservice to the administrative team at Dighton Elementary School if I said. X, Y, and Z, you're right, it's not gonna happen. Yep. When they're looking at it, is it, is it a possibility? Mm -hmm. I can't take that off Can the table. Can I ask you one question no, about and that? And, 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 mm -hmm. and I am not trying to interfere oh, with no, their see. ability to assess, to assess their needs. Right. I am pointing out something that is, if you, you can call it a political issue, you can call it a whatever oh, issue. Right. I'm just saying, this has to be brought to the people in Dighton so that when they hear the presentation, it's like, oh yeah, that's what they said they were going to do, and this is what we're voting on. Mm -hmm. I just caution you. So what happens if you get preschool parents who really want it to be considered? I mean, they're Dighton kids. You know, we really want you to consider getting our kids out of the high school. That's, that's what I'm saying, that those are considerations for preschool parents who are, you know, Dighton residents who also should be heard, and, and that's really uh, the other side of uh, the issue. This is uh, also that slight preclude that simply because mm -hmm. right down the on. road you can right. do it. That is not what you brought to the people in Dighton. You brought overcrowding at that building over there with the intent of maybe down the road you can bring it, and you're not losing. You can still do that. Mm -hmm. And when I say you, I mean your, oh, your, your right. administrative group. The school department can still do that. That has not gone away. The urgency, the moving the pre-K out of the high school, it's not the same urgency as the overcrowdedness that all of those parents and all of those children are facing at the elementary. And that's what that's what I'm saying. People are looking at it. So just um, this point is slightly moot just because there's a timeline associated with this. Because when when are they even going? So everything My happens, question. right? We have our town meeting. They vote to have the town meeting on August 21st. What is, what is the timeline we're looking at for installation? Because are you going to... Well, the timeline that we put uh, when we sent the addendum out, mm -hmm. um, I put a uh, substantial completion date of November 22nd, which, yep. which is right before Thanksgiving. 
Um, and would you, you wouldn't move kids mid-year or mid, mid-semester. I'm thinking you'd do it in January or, you know, when, before the start of the like third quarter. The Christmas break. All right. So, okay. okay. Thank you. So anyway, they wouldn't move if they were going to until, they want to move until yeah, the, the new the year. Christmas so there's okay. plenty of, okay, thank you. Mr. Jefferson, school committee member. Uh, I'm going to say this, and I have a former, I wasn't planning on coming into the school committee and passing. I was watching him in that house, and I had a lot of questions where, as former person on the school capital committee, mm -hmm. I'm a little curious where this conception is coming that six classrooms is not enough because when we decided to send six to the town, that was to support well, and you'll recall Rachel and I, if you're at that, that July 12th meeting, we mm -hmm. said people don't think six is enough, we should be buying more than six, but people don't realize last year we let three teachers go. There were three classrooms. They didn't just magically disappear. Those classrooms are still there. Mm -hmm. So we're adding those three teachers back. Yes, we've transitioned STEAM and different things. But even that, we're adding six classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know where this fear or this misconception is that if preschool was, and again, I'm just speaking like Dr. Azar is watching it as we were coming back to meeting. Mm -hmm. um, no one's made these decisions yet, but I feel people have this, like, it's the worst thing if they decide to. If the administration and the people that, as we said at our last school committee, and our, we paid to make these educational decisions, decide preschool should move, you should. That we decided to vote for six um, and recommend six to the town because that supports it. The other thing people need to consider as well, um, I'm sure people are familiar with how the regional agreement and all the assessment works. I wouldn't assume that. Recovered <laughs> moves. <laughs> so, just think of the cost of now we have 30 extra high school kids because the pre-K is included in the high school enrollment. So now you think where, I'm sure, I mean, we've had the eighth grade when the school burned down. I'm sure we hope it could say, hey, we know that the you know, module is maybe getting in place come July 1st. We're not going to charge you that assessment. You know, under certain circumstances, we have the ability to say that. But, you know, I'm a little, if I'm here now as a voter, we don't think six is enough, then we shouldn't be buying six. But in my opinion, as someone that was on this capital committee, and five to 10 years for that school, that gives that school a five track school at every grade level. Gives it room for two or three preschools, and it gives it room to put some specialists in. So I'm just curious where this conception is coming from that six is gonna be enough. I mean, obviously we miss, if they're not gonna be in place for September 1st, um, but you know, I just am a little concerned on why everyone is preschool is not going to be there. There isn't enough room there to support that. How I would respond to your and and I appreciate you coming and and stating that. I can't possibly answer your question because I'm not in the mind of every resident that lives in Dighton. What I will say is, as my colleagues have stated, we came we came to the people and we said we have a space crunch. We need more space. Please approve these modular units. You would agree that that happened, right? So. I'm talking about, and I know this is tough, but you're an elected official, you understand perception. It is the perception that we asked for more space and now we're filling more space, we're filling that space that was approved with kids who weren't previously there. Yeah, That's all should, I'm saying. But people should understand we approved that space under the assumption that those kids would move there. So I guess if the message... No, that's no, not I, true. Okay, so then there's a disconnect with because that's, we, there was no... We, when we discussed adding, recommending six, Correct. that was under the assumption preschool... But who there. gave that assumption, Mr. Jefferson? The article was not even read by a school committee member. So when did you give people this perception? Are you talking about, well, the article that was read at the first time meeting wasn't about the number of, the it was a dollar, right? But what you're saying you gave people a perception or there is a perception. So when was that, when was the perception given that the pre-K students, because it's still not even decided. Right, right. so, so what I'm saying, what, what I'm telling you is from my perspective when, and when we had made the discussions that... Who's we, Mr. Jefferson? The capital, okay, so the capital committee, well, first capital committee, when the school committee ultimately made that first one to lease, the discussion was six because it would support if preschool moved there. So when was that said, Mr. Jefferson? And then, when was that mean? I mean, we, we had yeah, that meeting. I read the minutes right. that the town clerk made from the town meeting. We're not talking town meeting. We're talking when the school committee made the recommendation mm -hmm. that we were going to send six to lease, mm -hmm. we made, and pull up our meetings, it should be online. I'm mm -hmm. saying, I'm not saying it to you, but mm -hmm. I sat there and I said the same thing. This is the minimum of what we need to support preschool. Because like you, 
If we went for 10, people in the town would be like, oh, we don't need to go for a long-term solution. This is going to get us by. But it was, we discussed, the school committee discussed and stated that we were recommending six. Now, if there was some translation left, lost when it made it to the town, that wasn't, I mean, okay, I don't know who was apologizing for that, but when I'm just speaking for me as a committee, and I think the rest of us, when we, I mean, me as a member, and we, we discussed that, six was the recommendation to support what we know, making that school a five-track school. We know we had three classrooms that were emptied out last mm -hmm. year. So this, this year, even with those modules, that school's going to have nine extra classrooms than it had last year. Granted, I know last year it was the Band-Aid solution from three mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. But what I'm just saying is maybe there's a disconnect where, like you're saying, people didn't know that the recommendation was to support five. Maybe that message needs to be cleared up, and maybe at that town meeting someone mm -hmm. needs to explain that. But School committee should be saying that. No. Correct? We were right. Right. One second. Uh, My response to you on that is unless you've sent a communique to every resident in town that this was your plan, I, you understand why people don't know that that was the plan, right? Because nobody was at that meeting, Mr. Jefferson. Well, well, right. I'm, so why I'm would you saying. expect people to know? You know, you well, were looking I, at an empty audience. So where did you find... Right, but I guess... So the question, aren't even played in Diane. So I guess the... The, the school committee is a play today. Channel 98. Okay. I didn't even know that. Uh, Mr. Jefferson, this is exactly why I said what I said a few minutes ago. What was presented at the town meeting and what got approved, the 300000 that was agreed to be set aside, dealt with the six classrooms and there was no definite decision mm -hmm. on pre-K. And as we heard tonight, Pre-K is still, at the present time, at DR, there is no definite, absolute, positive agreement on the administration at the elementary school or the uh, superintendent's office administration. They are definitely going to move. And all I'm saying is, because of the perception out there and because of the people who have supported this proposal, bring it into town meeting at the, the special, the way <coughs> people have the perception. You lose nothing if in a year from now, because it's going to be, if it's, let's say it is the second semester, really, are you going to move them for one semester when you could say, you know what, we're planning ahead, and in September of 2019, mm -hmm. we will have everything worked out. We will have the data from NESDEC, and this is the projected enrollment, and we can now move or if the data comes back, no, we can't move them. But the fact of the matter is, I support this. Me too. I don't want to sit at a town meeting and have people say, does anybody know what the school department is doing? Do they know what they're doing? That is not a criticism. I am trying to point out, come in with what you asked for. As you said when you started, you asked the people of Dighton for something and it's something that they will support, and they know you're going to do exactly what you asked them for the money for, they will support you. We want this town meeting to hopefully flow. We want, hopefully, it's a, a majority of people, two thirds, <laughs> vote this money so we can address this issue. And all I'm pointing out is please, we went through two sessions of a town meeting. The, with the first one, when it ended, knowing we were going to the next one, we were sitting and looking at one another and saying, does anybody know what that was about? What, what, what is the school department asking us for? By the time we got to the second meeting, and even Mr. Swartz got up and to discuss things, what we were looking for is, quite frankly, there's six rooms here, this is what I'm gonna support, and I'm going to uh, have faith and trust that the school administration is going to act in the best interests of all of the parents, even if it means the pre-K up, up there for another year, but also to address all of the issues that came up at the town meeting that all of the parents with children over there uh, are concerned about. Please, we don't want to muddy the water with more what ifs. You should have done this or you should have done that. Mm -hmm. This is the proposal, folks, six rooms, all the data is here. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been asked to support. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, that's what's before this board tonight. So that's all I'm saying. I just that's wanted to respond to Mr. Jefferson and then I'm gonna let Town Administrator Ernstein speak. Mr. P uh, Selectman Pacheco can give his final words, Selectman Goulart, and then we'll tidy this up. Um, it sounds like we all support it. So you don't have an issue here. Um, I'm not even saying that they shouldn't, the pre-K students shouldn't be over there. That's not what I'm saying. My concern is getting it passed. So I want to uh, create the least amount of waves and not rock the boat so that this is a sure thing because we all would agree, right, that this has to happen. Right, and I right? agree, and I, it's quite new on the same thing. I've been mm -hmm. this drum for years, but the point, I, I'm a little concerned, I'm like I'm hearing, where people think that six, if six isn't going to get us through for the next five, ten years, then we have a problem. But, like, I'm just reiterating, and again, maybe there was some translation loss, but mm -hmm. when this was discussed and the school committee recommended six, it was that would support a, a five-track school preschool if again but it was to support preschool because again we don't want to we didn't want to just do two or four but like I said it's this was the expected mm -hmm. thing but again I just caution too that you know people in Dayton if you know 30 people extra at the high school for an assessment this is going to be a large shift in capital assessment and operating costs so um, that's one thing to consider you know because that's how the high school enrollment is calculated but I appreciate you coming down here. You know, another thought is, if in fact the Rehoboth pre-K goes to Rehoboth, now you just have Dighton pre-K students, don't count them as part of the enrollment, consider them tuition students, and have Dighton pay for those students separately, like we used to do when we really had tuition students. It's one thing when you have a joint program with the two towns. When only one town is sending children, it's like in the old days when Berkeley was over here in, at Dighton Rehoboth. They become tuition students so that the amount of money that would be used to educate those children while they're in that building, you come up with a tuition rate. So that way the, the district as a whole, the town of Rehoboth, is not impacted by the fact that there are Dighton children in that building and the Rehoboth kids are back in Rehoboth. It, it can be done, all right? Again, we want to get this thing passed. Well, we have time. If, if we stick with the August 21st, mm -hmm. we also have a, at least a one school committee meeting, and we have time to let the Dine Elementary School uh, administration work on what their plan is, because their plan has to be spot on on September 1st. Right. Kids are coming, right. and preschool's right. not involved at all on September 1st. And then if the modules get put up uh, in November or whenever, then we have to take the Dine Elementary School plan and move whomever they think is in the best interest, kid-wise, education-wise. Exactly. Exactly. So to your point, actually all your points, is that by August 21st, we as a school district will have a plan, and if preschool's included, then we have to be honest and transparent as to how that's going to work, and if they're not included, then they're not included, and then we can discuss with the school committee about that tuition piece that you just shared. I mean, that's a, a that's great good. idea overall, and then it gets everyone to where they need to be, and then we work on those two parallel mm -hmm. committees, SOI, and as far as who's doing what, when, and how, we all know that. Correct. So I think August 21st is a great opportunity to get everything in place, because by that, by August 21st, as a school district and parents, Parents have to know where their kids exactly. are going September 1st. Right. You know, and if, if the preschool is staying at the high school, those parents need to know that a little bit further, you know, I mean, closer uh, to, to the now than, than the later. So, mm -hmm. so there's no pushback in that regard. And if those Titan children stay there for a year and they're handled as tuition students, there is no concern at all on the part of Rehoboth that we are paying to educate Dighton students. Mm -hmm. That problem goes away for that, that group well, of children. Right. Uh, okay, so, okay. so we are, as you've just described, on a very tight schedule and we have some work to do as far as setting the date. Mm -hmm. So these are the votes that, and I need the exact cost that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I'd be looking for the Board of Selectmen to mm -hmm. authorize. So you're going to set the town meeting date in place mm -hmm. um, and time, open the meeting and allow me to craft 
the article that's going to show up on it and then close it on the same night and then you're going to give yourselves you, you need to make a motion to authorize yourselves to sign that warrant we have to post this by august 7th which we don't have another meeting until august 8th but so can't we just have a special if yeah, you'd like special if you'd like i just don't like to commit people if i don't know well, their schedule you so. have to do what you have to do yeah. so so that's, fine. that's all the stuff that needs to be done what is the exact cost you're looking for for us to authorize. There was another proposal there. There is an exact figure, and uh, Chairwoman Kucher gave that, that figure at the meeting. The three, is that taking off the 300000 that's already been appropriated, or no? Well, you would no. just subtract no. the 300000 okay. you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Mr. Aguiar. Yes, I was going to ask that uh, if you could give an opportunity to speak, because there yes. were two proposals given to us. We right. have one complete proposal here. We never was given information on the second one, but I did want your opinion sure. as to I which one is the best. Sure. Hello, Diane. I looked at both proposals. Both are uh, co-compliant buildings. Mm -hmm. They have different configurations. I actually went to the site and laid this one out with uh, facilities director Nappy. I think it works better with the property, mm -hmm. the location of the buildings. It doesn't create any corridors, dead ends, <clears throat> things of that nature. So I'm in support of this this, this proposal. I do have a question though regarding money. When we looked at the initial plans, there were a couple of code compliance issues that came into place. And I haven't looked at the full set of drawings. I'll look at those when the permit is issued. But have you taken into consideration some of those build outs that need to be done because of the uh, exit discharge areas, things like that? Yeah, I reviewed the exit discharge with the, uh, with the vendor. And uh, he's well aware that that would have to happen uh, immediately uh, to keep that, e keep that egress. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank may you. I make one additional suggestion? Or actually, let me ask a question before I make any suggestions, and then we'll, we'll tidy this up. Um, I understand that there's a heavy um, learning theory that goes into studying whether um, the pre-K students should move to the elementary school, and I respect that 100%. I wouldn't, I wouldn't negate that, but I would hope that they would balance the learning theory with what's actually practical. So will Mr. Nappy or Mr. Aguiar be involved in those discussions? Or is this just going to be a, a discussion made on theory? I don't understand the question. So the, the, what we're discussing tonight, or what we did discuss, was we don't know yet if the pre-K students will move over. So that is a decision that will be made by the administration at Dighton Elementary, correct? Yeah, in yeah. conjunction with. OK, uh, that, that was my office. question. Yeah, and, will and they Dave's part of perfect. Central Office. Okay, so. that was my yeah. question. And, and if you recall, oh, I'm sorry, if I may, mm -hmm. um, if you're not aware of this, mm -hmm. just to give you an idea about the educational theory and people being involved, we do our district learning walk six times a year, which means the administrative team mm -hmm. goes in and out of classrooms. We have a rubric to follow. And one of the administrative team is uh, our business manager, Catherine Antonellis, who accompanies us with the educational folks. And there are often times where she will look up and say, oh, the ballast is out where, <laughs> you know, it's a, little dark, yeah, it's a little dark in that room. That's not really conducive. So, so to your point, yes, stakeholders, uh, our administrative team, uh, Dave, Dave uh, is uh, part of those discussions <laughs> regularly. Perfect. Sometimes one's is why he's part of those discussions. <laughs> but, well, you but know I'm exactly, not there, so I just the environment. To... Yep. And, and I think what you've seen uh, readily on the, uh, the Rehoboth side and the Dugan side with the facilities with, and, and now the high school with the roof, mm -hmm. the windows at Beckwith and, and the new roof on Palmer River and the buckets that caught all the water at the high school. The, we have to make sure our environment is set and the only way to do that is to have the experts just like we want as a, a select person uh, Pacheco had indicated about if we do have a, and when we do have a building committee mm -hmm. to have the right people on it, the architects, the engineers, uh, these people who are committed. Mm -hmm. so, so yes, facilities is very important mm -hmm. and I think we've proven that with our relationship with training uh, and how we utilize our business manager. So to your point, uh, yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Doug. So you. the total cost of one million one hundred and four thousand. Are there other numbers in there? Is I there thought something it wasn't after an that? even. I can't what, remember. What? Did say some change there? Yeah, yeah, there is some change. Okay. That's what I what our town administrator needs is what exactly. is the total cost minus the three hundred thousand that we've so, already set aside. That is correct. That's the number we need for that warrant. I looked through here. I don't. I don't, I don't, so. I don't have it. I know the numbers that we have discussed, mm -hmm. but I don't. I don't want any room for error because a warrant article was miswritten. So just 
Tell me what you need. You can clarify <laughs> that okay. with tomorrow with uh, Perfect. Catherine. Okay. I know you have it because it was read at the meeting. Yeah. So I know yeah. you guys have it. Okay. So we're not going to vote on a figure tonight then? If I we're having we should, a meeting, if we're next having week, another meeting next see. week, let's, yeah, then we can. So we'll do week. that. So okay. you'll vote to close. Okay. 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 We'll have to crack it down because <laughs> you don't you don't leave the <laughs> house till what? I leave at seven. Oh, you leave at seven. Yeah. I'm early. Six thirty. To the latecomers, are oh like I'll sleep over the night before. All right, we have <laughs> taken up a lot of okay. your time this evening. Do you have anything? Yes. So I need um, you will need to vote to. Call a special town meeting, set the date. I okay, that's still on the agenda. Oh, okay. What do we I'm need sorry. to do about this right now? This is all tied into it. Okay. And they're going to work with me on a figure. We'll craft the article. And if we're having a special meeting, then mm -hmm. I can bring that to you next week. Okay. And you're okay with that? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> You'd rather be just accurate, need to know right? the money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I move that we take agenda item 8A1. Out of order. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, the article that I mentioned is the to set the town meeting date in place. So, Mr. Chairman, I move that we set the date for the special town meeting to be Tuesday, August 21st. It'll be 7 p.m. We have the room from 6 to 9. So we, is, it, is it the middle school? The high no, school. it's high school. school. Region, at Dighton, Harbor Regional High yeah. School. <laughs> we have a motion. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> uh, further discussion? Hearing none, let's take it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. The motion passes. Uh, before we do any further voting, I just wanted to say to the residents, um, you weren't on the board at the time, Mr. Uh, Selectman Pacheco, but I know, I know you were supportive. Um, my colleague, Selectman Goulart, and I committed at that meeting to holding this special uh, town meeting. So we are holding true to our word. Um, so we appreciate uh, everybody's support on this matter. Are we going back to this presentation? <laughs> Do we, is there anything else we, Did oh, I, I just wanted else? to ask, um, Mr. Aguiar, yes. was the fire chief involved with any of this work? Are your, yes, he was, he was not part of that meeting, but him and I have had what, has he had a chance, he knows what they're planning, is he okay? Yes. All right. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Did you have anything else? I thought you were standing up, so I apologize. Yeah, no, I just, I just, uh, I don't want to take any more time. I just want to let you know, as board selectman, that uh, Mr. Nappy and I have a great uh, relationship, mm -hmm. and we stay open dialogue throughout all this process and any other processes going through the school. So we have a good relationship with the school department. Great. So, okay. so they'll keep you. Yes. You both will be cute yes. and perfect. Perfect. Anything else? Not an administrator? So I um, not on this presentation, but I have more town meeting stuff. So just for clarification then, we're going to be meeting next week to actually vote on the warrant itself. Correct. Right. Okay. Let's set that up. Good day. So next Wednesday. I was Wednesday. just thinking August 1st, which is, that is that next Wednesday. Date? Okay. Same time, same place. Um, 7.30. 7.30. <laughs> Could, um, it's 7 o'clock. Is, is there any way to do it a little earlier? When can you get there? How soon can you get there? I can be here. It's all right with me. 6.30? Okay. I'll be 6 here at 6.30. We'll get, we'll get uh, out of here early. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I move that we call a special meeting of the Board of Selectmen on Wednesday, August 1st at 6.30 p.m. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second, and that works for you, Madam Administrator? Yes, yes. Right. Wednesdays I belong to Dayton. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, let's take it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it, and the motion passes. The last thing on this is you just need to open the meeting warrant. I recommend that this be the only item, just due to the lengthy discussion, and it's in kind of an awkward time, um, and that you open the meeting warrant and that you plan to close it on the first August the 1st? August 1st, when you, want, you sign. You want us to open it, say, tomorrow? You can open it today, because I can get, I mean, well, whatever you 
It's only a few hours left in the day. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so. Someone's going to try to get their warm yeah. article in tonight <laughs> at midnight. It'll be in my office. This is my article. <laughs> ping, ping, ping. Yeah. Is it about second? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we open the warrant for the special town meeting uh, on August 21st. I'll second that the motion. War the, uh, the warrant meeting, the wa warrant, blah. The date for the opening of the warrant is Thursday, July 26th, and the closing date for that warrant is Wednesday, August the 1st. At 12 p.m. At 12, 12, 12 p.m. That's 12 noon. Get them in. <laughs> second it. I'll second that motion. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, let's take it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it, and the motion passes. Thank you for coming and Thank explaining Thank you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Nice seeing you. Uh, what I will say to you is, when you get ready to talk about Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. I'd like to have a conversation with you. When is their next meeting? Do you know when the next uh, meeting is? Oh, Mrs. Uh, Chairwoman Kucher yes. and Superintendent Azar. I know this is a little yeah. off topic. I swear we're going to let you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I requested to have uh, be, have something be placed on the agenda. Do you know if we're going to be doing that this month? Dealing with that in our first okay. August meeting. All right. August Perfect. August what well, is the, I'll be what is the date and time of that meeting? August 14th, uh, mm -hmm. 6 30. Thank you. So we're going to meet for our agenda, and that should be That's able to correct. be on there for the yep. first time. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, and for the public who thinks our meetings are long, attend a school <laughs> committee meeting. <laughs> no, watch it from the comfort of yeah, your own exactly. home. Yeah. Thank you all Thank very you. much. All right. Um, we are going to begin with public input for those who aren't asleep. And before I open it up to the public, we did have a public health alert, and it's kind of getting late. So I do want to read this for anyone who's still paying attention. This is from the Dighton Board of Health. Um, and this is something that was emailed. We posted it online. So I just wanted to read it tonight. An individual was recently bitten by a raccoon in the area of Main and Water Street. Although raccoons are not normally aggressive, for your safety, we suggest that you not approach any raccoon if seen. Below are the five most common signs of a rabid raccoon acting disoriented seeming partially paralyzed or sick, walking unsteadily or moving without ap apparent purpose, foaming at the mouth, chattering is normal, but other sounds are not. Here are some behaviors exhibited by both healthy and rabid raccoons. Being out during the daytime is totally normal. However, exercise caution as raccoons don't have a fear of humans. And raccoons have become urban animals like squirrels. They have absolutely no fear of people. If you have any questions, please contact our animal control officer, Stacy Ferry, at 774-218-5340. And at this time, does anyone? Mr. Chairman, yeah. I just want to mention, mm -hmm. after this incident happened, uh, there was an individual at Lincoln Village who was also bitten by a raccoon, and they don't believe it's the same raccoon. <laughs> so uh, it's just something you have to be aware of. Uh, if you live in the area around Lincoln Village, um, be alert. Uh, be careful with your own animals. And if you see a raccoon that's acting strangely, please call Mrs. Ferry. And don't go to pet it, please. No, or feed it. <laughs> in Not that same vein, I have some public input because sure. there are Aren't you glad you're not the Board of Health anymore? <laughs> um, so there are a couple of food recalls that the Board of Health has asked us to advertise to you all. Um, there's something going on with my printout here. These are also posted online under the Board of Health page. Under, um, If you go on the left-hand navigation, you'll see a place for announcements, and they're all listed right there. If you hover over it, um, they'll come up. But Ritz crackers, certain Ritz cracker sandwiches and Ritz bits products in the United States, including Puerto Rico and the United States Virgin Islands, due to possible health risk have been recalled and there's a whole um, you know different various bag sizes cartons which is mostly the mixed cookie cracker variety all there's a handful actually probably I don't know 15 so that's listed online I'm not gonna read them all because you're not gonna remember them so go online um, the other one is Hormel Foods Corporation recalled canned pork and chicken products as a possible foreign matter contamination. That foreign matter is metal. So um, mention anything about the beef stew. 
I need to know. <laughs> okay. For asking for yes. a friend. So one of these, unfortunately, is I can't see it because there's some weird overprinting. So I'm sorry, I don't know. But another one is the Black Label Luncheon Loaf with a Best Buy February 2021 date. And then it lists various production codes. But most of these were shipped to Guam only. So if you haven't been to Guam, I think you're safe. Another one, the one that I can't see was shipped to, let's see if, it's spam, I think. But anyway, double check that. That's also on the So there's, there's a problem website. with the spam? The spam <laughs> container, and there's something on my email that I can't read, and I'm sorry. Is that virtual spam? That's no, this no. is the real it's spam. The, yeah, it's the meat. Yeah. It's the mystery meat in the can. Okay. The other one that's been on television, uh, along with the Ritz products, is Pepperidge Farm Goldfish. Goldfish. Yep. I walked into that's Stop a huge problem for me. me too. last night, and there was a big display of Goldfish packages, you know, buy five for ten dollars mm -hmm. or something. I did a double take, and I'm thinking, what is this? Yeah. Because they were recalling all of those and telling people not to eat them, but Goldfish, mm -hmm. yeah. The problem is whey mm. oh, okay. that they've used in both the Ritz and in the Pepperidge mm -hmm. Farm uh, cheese products, mm -hmm. uh, crackers, whatever, and they think it's contaminated. I think it's listeria, oh, great. No but, it's, yeah. it's, it's but it's a problem. Okay, Anything thank you. Else? Yes, one more, yeah. sorry, and um, we'll go quickly. Uh, Dighton Fire Department, lo this is good news, local 4332. This information's on the Dighton Fire Department's website, uh, or excuse me, Facebook page, so if you are interested, go there, uh, it has all this information, and of course, you can call or check in with us and we'll give the information. Um, they are, they have a mission of promoting education, the Dayton Fire Department, and they're proud to announce the first annual EMT basic scholarship. Um, the goal of this scholarship is to assist those desiring to begin a career in emergency medical services by becoming an EMT. The scholarship will, pro will provide one qualified applicant who shows a commitment to the profession, the funding support needed in order to achieve this goal. I'm just going to interrupt myself and say great job to the Dayton Fire um, Association because this is an awesome thing, I think. The qualifications, they must demonstrate a strong desire to pursue emergency medicine, must be between the ages of 18 and 24, and must be a resident of the town of Dayton. And there's just some application requirements and information about the ward process. So please do check that out if you're interested. And again, thank you to the firefighters in charge of that, because that's, that's great. Thank that's you. a great community thing. Thank okay. you very much. I feel like a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Private investigator. <laughs> Uh, do we have any public input, Mr. Higgins, Mr. Ferry, Mr. Aguiar? No. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to uh, give the floor to our town administrator for her report. Okay. Mine's very brief. Uh, these are literally just quick updates. But good things. Good things. The policy review board that I can't seem to stop talking about, we finally have our first meeting. It's August 6th, and we'll get started. I have a whole plan on how to make this the most efficient. And again, just a thank you to all of those people who have stepped up to work this out with us. Um, it's, you know, we need the help, and it's great, and I'm happy that they're all involved. Um, so that's good. So that's August 6th, so that's coming up. And a bit of a procurement update. Every time Tom Ferry comes by, I get more work. <laughs> um, but there are some scopes <laughs> of services out there, and I just wanted to let you know that these will be coming up. So the first is network support services for IT. Ooh. We are, I'm actually meeting with two companies tomorrow to go through and try to um, figure out how we can have a, an administrative company take over um, from what we have now. And the other is tree thinning at the town forest. There's some diseased trees, some hazardous trees, and they'll be um, taking care of that. So that's up and running with Mr. Ferry, our tree warden. Um, and there are some others in the works. As I said, every time he swings by, there's another one. Um, but those will be before you too, and that's all I have for my report. And you are making progress with the TIF board as well, so oh, you, yes. ha oh, you, you are yeah, crazy busy, right. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of good things happening, so thank you very much. Um, at this time, we'll move on to old business, and we have the recommendations on municipal operations. Um, we already did the first item, which was selling items. Um, yes. So what I'm going to do, because we have a lot of different subcategories here and there's a lot of stuff to go through, I'm going to throw the floor over to Great. you. I'm going to let you go sure. through what you think we need to go through tonight. Okay, so um, we'll just go down the list quickly. Passports and the department head meetings, we actually reached out at the next day was the department head meeting and we talked to them and thank you to Jocelyn Tavares, the library director. She's actually looking for 
somebody who would be interested in taking on passports at the library. And this would be in addition to um, the services we have here at Town Hall. But what I love about this is not only are we going to get more people into the library, which is a good thing anyway, but they are open on Fridays and Saturdays, and we are not. And that's just an expanded service to an already well-taken advantage uh, service. So she's looking into that. You, I am respectfully requesting that you don't make a decision on this until mm -hmm. we have more of that information, but that's in the works. Um, and we then can't act on department head meetings? Oh, that's just passports. I was just about to get to department. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So um, Selectman Goulart had requested that we reach out to the department heads and how they felt, and um, that's fine. You know, That's great. I think we should all be on the same page and unified anyway, and I welcome communication like that. And so they, it, the majority was that it remained Selectman meetings. What are you doing in those meetings? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, that's fine. But I would, my only comment is I would actually, not that Karen doesn't do a great job, but I'm trying to not take her away yeah. from her desk. So and have I have can to do notes. easily take the notes there. I know that Slackman Goulart writes notes. I think between the two of us, we can cover it. Um, so if you're okay with that, it would just alleviate Karen a little bit and give her one less set of mm -hmm. minutes to do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I, you know, we can handle it on that end. Um, the, the feeling was uh, that the department heads and the Board of Selectmen, it's an opportunity for them to interact. And as, as Mr. Pacheco said, that uh, he's attended some from before. And that, that connection, they would like that to stay that way. So, All right. We'll respect that. Absolutely. Um, we already acted on... So do we need a motion on uh, Karen? Not I don't think so. Okay. No. No. Just don't go, Karen. <laughs> You're not allowed to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Don't show up. I know. I miss you guys. Yeah, for the department heads who, for whatever reason, are watching this right now, yeah, I'm still not going to go. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. I work. <laughs> They're in spirit. Nobody sits in the chair. So yeah, that's we already acted on that. We already acted on procurement. Mm -hmm. um, the meeting schedule, I think, is something we can tackle tonight. Uh, I have proposed meeting. Um, I said every other week, but actually we need to revise that because meeting every other week ends up messing with the whole schedule because some weeks, uh, some months have uh, multiple, more than just the four. So um, maybe the first and third or second and fourth Wednesdays of every month, whatever it is. And my take on this is that we put together a meeting schedule six months in advance yeah. mm -hmm. so that we have six months of meetings put you know we know when we're meeting and we can have that schedule you would of course review that first if you had any sort of you know maybe you're away or out of town or you're at a special training or something you can bring that to our attention we will make sure that that's not there that we'll you know rearrange a schedule for that and then of course hold meetings like we just did tonight mm -hmm. as necessary but really try to keep and that helps us mm -hmm. plan as well when I know that somebody wants to be before for the selectmen or I know something's coming up I can assign a date to it and it's just helpful I mean not that I couldn't do that before but if we have the six month yep. thing going that helps what out. about services to townspeople because when we're not here these offices aren't open so that's always been very if I'm I'm gonna be very honest and it's not meant to be malicious I think it's very strange that anybody leaves if town hall is open till 5 30 everyone should be here till 5 30. Mm -hmm. i don't really understand why people are getting out and walking out the door it, it's not made sense to me we'll see every i plan on being here i'll be when here when we go on the summer schedule yes. town hall offices unless they have meeting schedule mm -hmm. the town hall offices follow the selectman schedule for the summer right. so every other wednesday if we go on every other Wednesday, that means they are not going to be here and the townspeople will not have access to them for and only that's every what other two weeks. Schedule is helpful for as well yeah. because it can cover that. But I understand I, I But how does I that happen no if it here. says on the door the hours are Wednesday mm -hmm. six thirty to eight? Like that that just and I know it happens. I, you're absolutely right, but I don't understand mm -hmm. why that happened and why it's continuing. I Ms. Why why wouldn't it be just as simple as that the town hall is open and the same schedule that Slack would meet? We follow the same schedule. Well, yeah. but right. that, that's, 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 that's six month thing helps out immensely well, because it can pan. Most people know that these days don't go. Will be open. Correct, exactly. I, and if we post that on the door for the summer, yeah. I can't see why there would be any confusion. Well, it would be a posted beat right on the bulletin board. Um, but to your point, it's a I change agree. from the norm. It yes. is. Yes. Yes. That's what it is. I don't think that the taxpayers are served any less. I actually oh, I'm not this, saying that. I actually think there's more consistency, mm -hmm. and they would actually know exactly when we'll be here. Yep. Except for the person that says, I need a 
blank certificate, fill in whatever it is. I went to town hall, they're closed. What happened to Wednesday nights? They were always open, meaning well, during the regular yeah. schedule. That's all I'm but, saying. Yeah, we, we just need to advertise it. We, we need would to just let the have public a new know. regular meeting schedule so. that would be bi-weekly. Yeah. Everybody knows so. I'm in support of this. Here's my issue, and I don't really have an issue, but to me this is important. I think we should define, and maybe this is part of the six-month schedule, but my concern is doing bi-weekly meetings during budget season. I do think we would need to kick it up into high gear at least during then. So do you have... I actually have, I, I had this conversation with Selectman mm -hmm. Pacheco today. I have been part of a budget season where we met every week, and I've been part of a budget season where we met every other week. Yeah. I'm fine. Like I said, Wednesday is Dighton. I don't do anything on a Wednesday unless there's some catastrophic thing happening. Wednesdays are for Dighton. So I'm here. I think it's wise maybe to spread things out in the budget. We already get some criticism a little bit, like your meetings are too long. I have a whole idea about how I'm going to approach the budget next yeah. year. But... Again, I, I'm not, I think it's wise to have every week for the budget. I think it's helpful. There's so many changes that go on. Um, and in the interest of time, you're trying to jam in a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. So I, I would be totally fine with having a more often meeting schedule during the budget. So would you be okay with, for example, and I don't know what the motion is going to be because I'm the chairman and I'm not going to make it, but something like going to a biweekly bi -weekly schedule with the understanding that we need to be flexible during budget season. So moved. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, right. I, I yeah, but, believe that's perfectly fine. Yeah, but why do we have to include that in the motion? Because you you can call special, special meeting True. anyway. So yeah, but I think, so it's, I, I think it's just being clear to, to the people. Yeah. yeah. But with or without, I don't mind. I'm prepared to make a motion that the board of selectmen meet the second and fourth Wednesday of the month, effective September for us. Okay, um, well, I'm gonna, a, we're already, oh, okay, I get the second and fourth. Okay, all right, I get what you're saying. Uh, I'm going to second it for discussion purposes. Sure. All right, discussion. My concern is that at the beginning when this was brought up, before <laughs> we went on our summer schedule, we said we were going to try it for the summer months, July and August, and make the decision in September. Now that we're discussing it tonight, we're almost into August, and I think we need to hear from the people out there who are hearing this tonight. I think we need to get the word out that the Board of Selectmen is going to do what it said it was going to do when it voted <laughs> back in June. And in September, the Board of Selectmen is, at its first meeting, will act on establishing the meeting schedule, and that's when we can do the, the permanent changes that we're talking about, whether it's first and third Wednesdays or... Mm -hmm and schedule others. That's all I'm saying, because that's what we told them back in June when we voted this thing originally. We're going to let it run for the summer. And I don't think we actually voted, right? We, we never actually I don't believe it was a decide. vote, but I think it was a test run, yeah. and yeah. I believe the budget thing was that discussed was and, yeah. and talked about. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I mean, I think that it's going well. We've got, I mean, with some certain circumstances in June, we actually didn't meet for right. a while. And we had but, more meetings last summer, right. Select and Goulart. You remember, oh, yeah. we were busy. Yeah. So we didn't even all get I'm saying is what we told the people back in, well, it must have been May because it started in June. Mm -hmm. We went on this June, July, so like, August. I believe Sackman Taylor was here. I think Me I, too. this I, was April. This was in April. April. Yeah, so, this was March. So April. all I'm saying is let's let let's do exactly what we said we were going to do, which means run through August. But everyone is hears this tonight, um, and it will be out there uh, that uh, first meeting in September we will be acting on a permanent meeting schedule for the board of selectmen. But we can still so vote on this motion. The first meeting is September being the second yeah. Wednesday of the month. Yeah. September. Is that, you understand? Is that the one? What, what was the what first one? What is scheduled one? right now is the first week. Um, the first Wednesday. Because we ran through a list of oh, because summertime of the way meeting I've, dates. Oh, because of the dates. Are. And okay. it's the, like right now, we're on the second and fourth Wednesday. Okay. So uh, we for August, other, forget the special. That's a special. Hmm. We have August 8th and August 22nd. And then September the 5th, which is the Wednesday after that, Labor Day. That's, what, that's the date we'd be looking at. That would be the first Wednesday. The second would be the 12th, right? Correct. So okay. if we went with first and third or second and fourth, whatever. I like second. second it, it doesn't matter. September 12th, okay with you? My motion is second and fourth. Right. <laughs> Will you be free? The thing, with, the thing with first and third is that when we get into the busy holidays, that come towards the end of the month, we will not be in conflict with those. Because, for example, in November, we do not meet the Wednesday of Thanksgiving week, because, you know, Thanksgiving's the next day. So 
when we look at the schedule, we just need to consider November, December, because those are the holidays. So, that, exactly. You and know, that's exactly what I, what I like to do or used to do, I used to do a six, I, a six months at a time. One column was the selectmen's meetings, the other column was important holidays and dates to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Town meeting was on there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any sort of special date. And if it didn't work, or you, you know, the three of you had some sort of conflict or anything, we nip it in the bud six months in advance. Right. Everyone knows, everyone knows when yep. town hall's gonna yep. be closed, We're everyone knows when there's no week. trash pickup. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows. Yep. So mm -hmm. I, I like the six month planning head and it works out all the kinks mm -hmm. ahead yeah. of time. So I think we're all saying the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I think the, the taxpayer or, or the citizen expects to get that kind of services that holiday week. Yeah. They know that there's interruptions that holiday week. Yes. So. And we'll do it far enough in advance. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. I'm okay with first and third, second and fourth. Second and fourth on the table, totally fine with it. Anybody have any further discussion? No, I just want uh, mm -hmm. the town administrator to be able to put together a draft six month schedule. Sure. Yeah. So to see, considering the holidays, whether one and three or two and four are the best way to go, so we only vote it once. Is this something you could do before our September meeting? So we could kind of act on it before? Yeah, because we got a couple of meetings. Yeah. Sure, but what are you asking me to do? To put, the, do put it together put with second and fourth no, no. Wednesdays? You're going to look at the, a, a bi-weekly meeting schedule. Okay. And you're going to look at the holidays. And oh, you're going to figure see. out which Wednesdays yeah. we can meet. We might have meet. to switch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And based on that, You'll make You'll a decision. You'll come up with a one and three Permanent. or a two and four. Sure. I am but, but the motion definitely before, able to do but it. But the motion but is for could, a second and Correct. Four. And you could, correct me if I'm wrong, when you do that, when you like go to do what the meeting schedule would be six months, you would already I be know. seeing, and then you would tell us this week you can't do second and fourth. You so, have to do. And what I end up saying it like on paper, but submitting to you is, you know, this holiday's following here, so I've changed the schedule. It's going to be the second and third Wednesday that month or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I'm okay with that. Um, I, w I just wanted to, I think we overlooked because we kind of discussed this last week. I just want the public to be aware. Part of the reason that this is so important uh, to the town, I would say, um, is because we're trying to look for ways where we can make uh, administrative assistant Brady's life a little bit easier and sort of synchronize the operation. It takes a lot of work to do a meeting. I, I know you guys are <laughs> literally you know, busy up until we come out here and the camera turns on. Um, that is the point of doing this. This isn't you know, a decision where we just want to work less. Um, this is important for the actual function of the town. So I just want to put it in the proper context before we take a vote on this. Any further discussion? I just like to say maximize efficiencies. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's my. Absolutely. And I want to commend before we take this vote, because it doesn't matter which way it goes, I want to commend you for taking the time to discuss possible strategies with Mrs. Brady, because I think nobody besides you would know how to improve efficiency, because she's, you guys are the ones doing you thank know, you. the brunt work. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, any further discussion? So just to remind everybody, what we're voting on now is to set the Board of Selectmen schedule going forward starting September 12th to the second and fourth Wednesday. September 12th? Yep. That would be the first. That would be the first. The second Wednesday of September. Oh, I see what you yep. mean. Um, so this would be a permanent thing going forward, um, obviously, unless we decide to change it. So um, we let's take it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I abstain. Motion passes. The ayes have it. Thank you. All right. Um, continue away. The one I'm afraid to touch. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still going to do a schedule? What, yeah. what do you mean? Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She'll have a She's schedule for us. You're going to see everything. I'm actually going to do it early because I don't like to wait. So okay. I'm going to do yep. it early so everyone yep. can. Thank you. The, the other thing is that given the late, some of us call it the late hour, not everybody. <laughs> uh, it's are we going to go through all these items, or is there any in particular that you want us to think about, um, or act on tonight, or think about for the next meeting? Sure. So I, the ones Could that we at I least would get say through are the desk cool. thing yeah. before we. I think the that's other stuff, a major one, just because of. I just think it's a major one, but there are others that I'll go through that I think sure. that are, are quick. So the selectmen's reports. When you have selectmen's mm -hmm. reports, I'm just recommending and and requesting actually that we can put them on the agenda because. 
Slack and Google Art, for instance, is, is all over the place with various different activities. Yep. They're important. They're important to the town. And people may be specifically following that. Mm -hmm. And the whole open meeting law is all about giving people the opportunity to come to a meeting that they want to know about a certain item. So if we inadvertently say, like, oh, I was at this event, somebody, you know, potentially, it's just in the gray area of the open meeting law. Mm -hmm. So if we have selectman reports and you know you want to say something, if we could just send it over to Karen or myself, we'll add it to the agenda. Of course, there's always public input that if it didn't make it there, you can you can okay. put it in there. Um, so that's a, I think a before did, is this something we need to vote on? No, just agreement. It's that just going to be it. a practice yeah. going forward. <laughs> right. Is this okay? Because sometimes I know you're I'm just violate like it tonight because <laughs> I went to the county. <laughs> no public problem. input. No public problem. input, Nancy. Um, <laughs> my only concern would be you know how sometimes like we'll have an event earlier that day and then exactly. we'll come and right. we don't want to wait a week exactly. right and so, i don't and that's okay. two weeks. I'll wait two weeks well, exactly right. so that's why oh. that public input is a catch-all there mm -hmm. um but as long as we're not acting on anything we're fine if okay. it's informational it's good but if you know about the whole mm -hmm. premise is if you know you're going to speak about this mm -hmm. just to, to add it in that's all that i think that's that, fair that is. Mm -hmm. um and then another quick one is, well, you know what, let's just do the desks and then if you want to, okay. if we're going to have to revisit anyway, might as well. Yeah. Um, do you have any, I, I mean, I know you wrote something right. here. So, so he, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sure. No, no, so give your recommendation. Here's my absolutely. recommendation on the three desks and this is really from efficient, I, I, it's not space meant to be, yeah, space understand. and efficiency. It correlates to another recommendation I have. Um, it's not meant to kick you out. It's not meant to do that at all. It's, I just think it's very not a good practice to have the three desks like that for a variety of reasons. One major one is the open meeting law. Another is space. Mm -hmm. um, Karen and I have already started cleaning out the office a little bit. So here's my idea to remove the desks. Removing the desks out, this would become potentially your meet, your desk space and this meeting room, because people aren't going to love this, but this meeting room is no longer kind of this free-for-all meeting room. We would use the other meeting rooms that would be available to us downstairs when next door is finished, which I think everyone will want to use that one. Right. Um, so Hopefully. this now becomes your space. If somebody needs to use this, Karen and I will definitely take all of the in, you know the the sensitive information that may be sent to you or dropped on your desks or anything like that away so there's no issue there or we can have mailboxes put in for you um, to come and get your mail mm -hmm. with one desk a shared workstation um, I like keeping where Nancy kind of is in the back there that little desk that faces the wall for a second workstation but we really do have to get away from um, people being here at the same time if there's office hours I think that's great maybe people can come in if you have an established schedule of office hours and the other two selectmen know that that's not available like the office isn't available to them during that time um, one of the other recommendations is that we hire another person for the Board of Selectmen slash Town Administrator to use together, not my assistant, but for it's not specifically a Town Administrator, it's for collectively. Um, I have a plan about how one does post-meeting and one does pre-meeting. What I mean by that is the work derived from the meeting, which is substantial, would be one person, minutes and all of that. The other person would be post, uh, pre-meeting, posting agendas, doing the schedule that we just talked about, mm -hmm. various things like that, and then also, tying into passports, a backup passport person. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, things going on mm -hmm. with this one item. Is this full-time? It's up to you. Part-time, full-time. I say um, full-time because it's coming eventually, mm -hmm. right? Like, that always seems to be the case. But that's up to you. My, I, I have two issues. Um, I have no, you know, I'm <clears throat> honestly public. I'm never here. I have a full-time job. I work in Norwood. So removing the desks, fine. I'm happy to sit on the floor. Have no problem with that. <laughs> My issue is when I finally do get here, I don't necessarily want to sit in this room because I'm going to be sitting in it for quite a, a length of time during <laughs> sure. the meeting. Um, My suggestion, friendly amendment, um, the most I'd be willing to do is to remove them and then put some sort of a small it, or medium size, I don't know, round table that we can kind of share like similar to what you have in your so that we have somewhere to put space. our stuff correct i use a filing cabinet so i'm not storing stuff if you took my desk out right now it wouldn't matter just the stuff on top of the desk would be important so that's my issue the other thing i have is before we discuss 
you know, getting someone else to help out in the office. I do think we should give the bi-weekly meetings a trial run sure. to see if that oh, sure. really does help. And I know you weren't saying okay. right now. Okay. But, Thank you. <laughs> um, so th those were my two issues. My colleagues? Um, I had actually had a conversation with Karen about this, I don't know how long ago. And, and then I read this. And then I took a look at my house at home and said, what am I going to do with all this stuff right now? Mm -hmm. I could unload a bedroom and bring it back here, and where am I going to put it? It's because I worked at home for so many, so many years, right. all right? And it was convenient. But I'm not on the Board of Health anymore, so I don't have that whole stuff. But I got stuff that I can't throw away. And yet, the other thing is, with all of the um, paper that we're getting mm -hmm. every week, every week, bi-weekly, whatever, this reminds me of the old days at the school department because this, we did these kinds of packages. I wish there's some way we could reduce the paperwork that's coming out here. Now the problem I have ideas is, on that. I, we just electronically, you're still going to have something paper here at the meeting because mm -hmm. even if you read it at home and write some notes, you've got to have something to say. What did that say about? Or if we get into a discussion, what is it exactly did it yeah. say? So or I, make I my notes am on the pound marking right. Thing so well. I'm yeah. very sensitive to uh -huh. packets. I actually felt strongly about paperless. Mm -hmm. um, not here in my previous position, and they we ended up moving to iPads and reducing the paper significantly. We're just not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to explore that, I'm very much on board. Can I be but I don't know if we're the, there yet. As the um, non-senior member of the board, I you am like a, what that a mean? What does that mean? <laughs> longest serving. I, longest long, serving. Okay. Well, she's the longest serving. Um, also the oldest. I, right, I, you said it, not me. I am like attached to paper. I'm sorry, greenies. I know I'm on the green community. I get it, okay? I love writing reading things on paper i'm sorry i need to mark it up nancy has her I, red pen I, exactly we are even if right. you gave even if the town was like board of selectmen you each have an ipad i just like right. cannot do and, it and i know this about okay. you <laughs> and i i we're not there yet my ideas on those after the meeting's done so Karen and I, by law, have to keep the meeting packets. That doesn't solve your note issue, mm -hmm. right? But if you want, we can easily scan this, and you'll have it digitally, and then you don't have to keep it at home. We started cleaning out. So we lost cable and phones for like an hour on Wednesday afternoon. We were the only ones here, and I was like, let's clean. So we started cleaning out, and my idea is that you each get one of the larger file cabinets for your stuff to curb that very thing. Bring it in. I'll go through it, you know, every, like an hour a day. I'll go through it and it's, see what needs to, I know that it's a lot. It should be. You've been on the board for a long time. You, you, but, but those the documents stuff that should I, come The stuff here. that I save is stuff I need. I got stormwater back to the beginning. Like to access? All right. To access? And periodically, I, yeah. yes. So, so if you had one of those filings. So what I'm saying is, now what I have here, besides my desk, which doesn't have a lot of space, I have right. that file that's sitting on my desk. Mm -hmm. That's active. And then when I can put it away, right. it goes away. Just like bridge projects. Once we get through with them, they get they right. downstairs, right. whatever. But that was the other thing I thought about. What am I going to do with all this junk I got here? Junk meaning I really can't throw it away, but it's also not the kind of stuff I would leave out in public. Exactly. I so we tell can you. work on that. I, I Anyhow, mean, I'm not, just a thought. I, it, and it's a good one. I it's real. literally had been putting stuff, you know, in my desk, and like I couldn't find anything. And Karen was, not, excuse me, Mrs. Brady, <laughs> administrative assistant Brady, was nice enough to, um, like, not give me, but put in the office like an empty filing cabinet. It's a small one with a top and a lower saved my life saved my life <laughs> honestly it, i am so or i'm hyper organized i can tell i just don't it just is labeled <laughs> color coded it was the best thing that ever happened to me so i love the filing cabinet it's a way better method than just putting stuff in or on a desk so i'm okay with removing the three desks to tie it all back together but i I still want some sort of a table. There needs oh, to be a station. Correct. I call it a workstation. A workstation. Because you still get this, like a computer. Because they have meetings in here during the day sometimes, I know. and we're not. I'm not going to kick somebody out so I can make notes on a. Do you know what I mean? I do, I, I do completely. Mm -hmm. So people I think also that, eat lunch in this room. Yes, Mrs. Cadley. Mm -hmm. No, and because yes. we don't really have a place to go, to to do we that. Need to fix or, that. Or, or, we need to provide a lunchroom. <laughs> 
<laughs> we've, been work, we've been working on logistics in this mm -hmm. building, so we have taken all that into consideration. Mm -hmm. And so. I'm not saying we do that, you know, tomorrow they're gone, mm -hmm. not at all. The other and thing I would say about the configuration of the desk giving the appearance of three selectmen sitting there cabbing, quite frankly, uh, since the last election, we rarely see one another. We're that like is ships true. in the night. That is those, that's how those, it's supposed to be. That's those, good. Those desks yeah. are vacant, and you know, if you walk in or somebody comes in when I'm here, one of one of my colleagues, it's hey, how you doing, and whatever. <laughs> um, and we're all going, whatever. I still work from home, so I'm not. Mm -hmm. When my computer's down, that's when I'm in here doing this. But um, I don't see Mr. Pacheco, and I rarely see Brett except at mm -hmm. night. Um, so I'm like a raccoon. it's not none of us are here not all a the rabbit time. Not, not a rabbit one. Not a rabbit. I said not a rabbit. One. So I, I agree, but then uh, I think uh, the idea of a shared workstation might work out as long as we have the filing that, space. But this is meant for a discussion to find out okay. what your concerns yep. are, your concerns, okay. and okay, so, then we'll address it and come back. But so that, can the junior member of the selectmen speak? Of course, this. Mr. Richard, I've been like a select in less than a month, and you're going to take my desk away from me? <laughs> Sorry. No, just we're starting to get you used to my... <laughs> this was written used. before, though. <laughs> my... I, if if oh, I could I'm, continue. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so, excuse me. <laughs> I am in favor of uh, keeping the desk. I, you know, I've spoke to you about this. Uh, I like to have a workstation. I like to be able to come in. This is my stuff. And uh, it's my turf. It's my, it's my turf. I agree with you. I, I'm with you as far as the home. I have a pile of stuff from the Zoning Board of Appeals that I can now get rid of. You're not in that situation. You're still an active I shred, as, I shred as much stuff as yeah. I can. I don't throw anything in the trash unless it's shredded. But, but I do have stuff that I have to refer back to. I don't, I don't doubt it, which no. is why the filing ca cabinet's coming Filing away. cabinet's I, better, I agree. rather and than a mess on the not, desk. I mean, we have to keep records of those. We are mm -hmm. bound. We need, mm -hmm. so we, they should be here. Mm -hmm. So we gotta find a spot. I mean, so we've talked you, about storage, because that's- I just so. wanna clarify. I, I'm okay mm -hmm. with the office hours, if that's how we wanna work it, so that we don't, uh, but uh, Ms. Goulart, uh, Mrs. Goulart is correct. We've been in, in here rarely, but occasionally, yeah. and there's no conversation going on. I'm, you know, I'm a new select, uh, selectman, yeah. so I'm coming here more often than I'm sure in the future I'm, I'm going to have to come mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I've acknowledged that this is not a 24-7 job, yeah. that I, I don't need to be here every day, but I do come in a little bit more often now because I'm, I'm learning the ropes. I, I mm -hmm. came in this morning. I came in early this afternoon you know, for the meeting uh, tonight, and I'm probably going to continue doing that for, for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you... If you want to have, you know, we can come to some agreement as to what our hours are going to be when we're going to be here. Uh, I'm okay with that. I, I do understand the situation in your office that it really ties up a lot of space. And we may be talking about help for you and where's that person going to go. So it is something. I'm not opposed to having a desk in here. I know that uh, you're not necessarily in favor of it. No, I, no, I just want, I want, I want my workspace. I want my work. I'm not sure how we can do it here, given, you know, the, the three board members and we have other people sitting up here. I'm not sure how we can do it, but I, uh, I would like to have the input from, yeah. uh, uh, if we're discussing logistics throughout the building, maybe we could make a private space for the selectman, not a private, but a public private space outside of that office that the selectman can go to, seeing as how they're using it one at a time. And the public will know they have hours. They can go see the selectmen during that time, and they'll have their own their, their own space. So, here, if, so there's I have so much running through my head. If there's set hours, we can make sure that nobody's in here for those hours. If there's set hours, we can eliminate at least two of the desks, I think. I understand that you don't really love the idea of sharing, but we can organize in a way where you all have your own drawer or your own section and your own filing cabinet. We have enough to have three, we have three filing cabinets. One can be Nancy, one can be mm -hmm. Brett, one can be um, Ken. Sorry, I should have done selectmen. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we have all that, we can organize it. Um, I think, I, I feel very strongly about this. I've hemmed and hawed about this multiple times. I don't want to give the accept, the, mm -hmm. the, I'm not trying to kick you out of here. I really am no. not, I welcome it. I just, mm -hmm. we do need to address this. You can't even walk it's too by, tight. behind my desk. I mean, my yeah. issue is not even the appearance because I know I'm not talking to them about anything and they know and that too. And we're not here. And we're, we're not here, quite frankly. <laughs> but um, my issue is space. We need space. We have two chairs in front of uh, Selectman Pacheco's desk that usually have stuff on them. We literally <laughs> do not have space. You can't even sit there because the chair has now become essentially like a table. Mm -hmm. um, we need space. So that's the issue. It's not so much we know we're not in there. Um, the other thing is if we're not in there, what is the problem with one desk? 
Like if we, you're not hanging out here, you're not hanging out here. You might be now, but you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, you'll be here less and I'm never here. So I, you know, like I like keeping that. I don't know what else to call it, but the workstation behind Nancy, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean by that, that, and then you can each have like a shelf and a filing cabinet and then one desk, one phone and, and the shared computer. A shared computer. I, I mean, like the idea that Mr. Aggie I mentioned, find another spot for the selectmen. We will have our desks, we will have our spots, and quite frankly, if you want to, you can separate them with carols. But Businesses do that. By the same token, I think it's important that when the public comes into this building, no selectmen work area, desk, table, whatever you want, whatever it is, gives the impression, where are our elected officials? If they see one of us, they know, you know, and listen to this they know we come and go you said it's not a 24 7 correction ken it is a 24 7 job we have to respond we have to respond 24 Mm -hmm. 7 but we don't work 24 7. i made the reference should have been that i don't need to be here but people coming into this i mean i've i've been in the office when i say alone karen was there or before kerry was there and way back when annette was there but somebody would come into the office and say i want to see a selectman well, so and so's down the hall, okay. Or what do you mean there's no selectman here? I'm coming to see a selectman. And it's it's there is a perception of the public where are our elected officials? Okay? They're the selectmen. Where are they? We have other staff, we have other people, the town is running. But I quite frankly like what you're describing because if there is space that can be allocated, uh to free up that room so that it's more office space, it's support staff, so forth and so on, for the board of selectmen, for the TA, for whatever else it's going to be used for. That would address the concerns that Mr. Pacheco and I have about our own work space, station, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, as I said, you can, if you look at office setups, they don't have walls anymore. They have carrels. Okay? Mm-hmm. Private offices are not for especially where we're in and out okay and we're not looking for private offices but we would like to have a desk that we can call our own at least i think that's where mr pacheco and i are coming from my only issue with that suggestion of creating a new space is i think the perception for a lot of people will be we had people go over to old town hall and oh maybe it was just so they could have more space which is totally not true. We're here less than we've ever been. I know you are, I know I am, and you're new, Selectman Pacheco. So that would be my concern with that idea is, why would we need an extra space if we're here less than we Well, we've also ever all are. your stuff is here, and your meeting is here, like you, and Karen's here, and I'm here. Like, I, I don't want you to go anywhere. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> so so I'm, you know, I'm, I would want to stay in that office over there, but I, you know, after this whole conversation going on here, I'm not totally opposed to having one area, one, whether it's a round table or, or whatever, that we have a stapler and pens and all that kind of stuff, but our stuff individually. Yeah. Your laptop, a, we have a shelf, your, yeah. we have a file cabinet so I can go grab my stuff and I can sit down at that table yeah. or desk or whatever. Uh, I guess I'm not opposed to that. So we would be removing two desks. Mm-hmm. Mine. Please take mine. You, you're gonna, you, you're gonna <laughs> I want to repurpose in. it. Is there something wrong? <laughs> with it? Uh, no, there's not. Okay. If we're going to keep a desk or we're going to keep exactly. a table, I, I'm not opposed to a desk, but then we could draw us that we won't be. Right. That, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to, I don't want to mess the things right. up. You I want to be able to go to Karen and say, it. Karen, I have a question about this, and I want to be able to see you across the hall and say, yeah. And you know, Karen can access the documents easier without tripping over, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's like, kind of. I mean, we cleaned out, we made decent. I mean, in, in one hour, yeah, less than, like, yeah. but an hour, we cleaned out a decent amount. I found mm-hmm. very random things. Here's why I like this idea, too, because I feel like it's two birds, one stone. If, when we go to reconfigure here, when Old Town Hall is done, everything's done, and now we're focused on Town Hall, my, I guess my concern, or I guess my bright side would be, If a new department or something says they need a space and we say, okay, you can have a space. Well, now we have two desks. We don't have to go out and buy new furniture and now they have better furniture than I have, which makes me jealous. 
Correct. And it's, right. it's um, Correct. You know, and that's the plan because Parks and Rec came in here, as you know. I'm not it, saying. No, I, <laughs> I know, agree but with like, that. If, but if that <laughs> yeah. happened, they are looking for a desk, a computer, a phone, a full on workstation, which is quite a. a it's an expense. It is. It's an expense. If we're going to do something like that, and we've had a conversation right. about this, it should be mm -hmm. other people, historical uh, commission yeah. or somebody else, Another the share. cemetery commission, yeah. being able to use that yeah. space and not just dedicated just to one. Because we'll have desks all over the place, and it should not be in that office there. If we're taking desk out, that new, mm -hmm. that desk where okay. your desk can go somewhere, and but not in that office well, over there. Well, as far as I'm there. concerned, this has very sensitive information. This is yeah. no yes, offense, so us. Um, yeah. You know, and whoever fills these chairs yeah. in the future, um, this is. So where do we go from here on this? Uh, do we? I feel like I think I don't know if you want to vote on it. If you want us to kind of figure out. I mean, I'm going to clean we regardless. Vote on so. it. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, and I'm not. I don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, is everyone okay I'm not ready to vote on it tonight. I think I think we need to work through this a little bit more. Uh, we are we going to hire more help? And that's later I on think in the we thing, need so to. you're right. There's, see, this isn't just one issue. There's other things involved. Tied into it. Um, and we got other potential boards or committees that would be affected by what happens, what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm okay yeah. with voting on it, because all we'd well, be doing is making more space. It doesn't, I'm not saying we're going to fill it. I think we should, we need to do a trial run for a period of time with the bi-weekly meetings and see if it really helps. I mean, I know Ms. Well, uh, Administrative well, let's, Assistant Well, if we're going to do the, the well, mm -hmm. we voted to do the, the bi-weekly, mm -hmm. continue the bi-weekly schedule. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we do these step at a time? See how that goes. Revisit the desk situation. Get more information on whether or not we need more support staff. Uh, figure out um, we did ask for information from Parks and Rec on what their thoughts and plans were uh, because this is all part of a plan. We, I believe are planning to come to the special town meeting with that request. I think that's what. Oh, in the fall. In the fall. I'm sorry. Now I need to specify. Yeah. October. Meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I it's believe. Well, I, I agree with a little bit of what Ms. Goulart is saying that I'm not necessarily ready to vote on this because quite frankly we haven't discussed what hours we're going to be here so I think uh, Ms. Gould and myself and you have mm -hmm. to think about what days we think our day we think we're going to be available to come here so but perhaps I don't think we should wait until we go the bi-weekly stuff we're already kind of doing that anyway I think we ought to maybe next at next week's meeting maybe mm -hmm. put this on the agenda mm -hmm. so that we can uh, take action you mean on two this. weeks well, actually we're meeting next we can week. do it next week right, this will be week. quick would you right? like that we're right, meeting we're next week for the I, warrant, we're so meeting August first. So yeah. if we that, can, rather than have a bunch of stuff on the, the, the following, if we can put a few stuff on the, uh, sure. on the next spread uh, the love, right? <laughs> spread the love. And do you mean just the selectmen's desk discussion or the rest of this? We can continue this entire. We can continue, but I thing. that's one that we can take some action on to okay. kind of live in, alleviate some of the mm -hmm. problems that are going on there. Okay. Since we're going to discuss, and I'm asking your opinion now, since we're going to continue this discussion next week um do we want to move on okay you're okay with that am, my yes. colleagues are we okay with that uh, move on to agenda items yeah to get okay the yes yeah. Not oh, the list yeah. Yeah. yes yeah okay, okay. yes all right okay. and yep. i just want to okay. say thank you for you know reading them for what they are and and having the conversation i want to thank you for being <laughs> honest <laughs> you know i knew um, you kind of gave me it with some caveats. You don't need to do that. You're here to give us your honest recommendation, whether we like it or not. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. Still alive, so that's yeah. good, right? <laughs> the, fuel, the fuel efficient vehicle policy. Um, I will give just a brief info. So since. Uh, we're working to become a green community. Uh, there are five criteria to become a green community. We've already satisfied three. This is the fourth of five. Um, this policy essentially pledges that we would reduce fuel consumption and energy use by only purchasing fuel efficient vehicles to meet this goal. So this is essentially a replacement policy. We have vehicles right now that are not fuel efficient. What we would be, do, be committing to if this were to pass um, would be when those vehicles half-life is now expired, we would replace them with something more fuel efficient. Um, and that's basically what this is. Um, there are exemptions. There are exemptions. Uh, would you like, should I read them? Um, well, I was just going to 
Uh, so I yeah. change this slightly from. I noticed. The, okay. <laughs> so I got this from another community that has their designation. Oh, okay, cool. And what I liked about it is they were very specific in the miles per gallon, um, the efficiency standards, mm -hmm. and I thought that can only help us because when I'm scrambling around, I just want to look at the policy and know what I have to do. I don't want to have to reference something else. I don't know if that's lazy or I'm just super busy and I don't have time for that. So I, I added kind of all of that mm -hmm. information so that we'd have it um, really at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. I will also state, um, just to piggyback off what our town administrator has said, there are some very specific exemptions. Um, these exemptions, and I will detail what they are, they basically exempt the school department, police department, and fire department um, from having to comply. And, and Hi. highway, excuse me. <laughs> He's looking at me like, don't, <laughs> we can't get a fuel efficient 16 Back wheeler. Home. Exactly. <laughs> um, good point. Thank you, Madam Administrator. <laughs> um, so the exemptions are as follows heavy duty vehicles, and I believe the cutoff is um, anything 8,500 pounds or more is exempt. Um, they include fire trucks, ambulances, some public work trucks um, that meet this policy's definition of a heavy duty vehicle police cruisers, passenger vans, and cargo vans. Fuel efficient models are not currently available for vehicles like that. Um, however, it, we would commit to purchasing fuel efficient policy cru police cruisers, yeah, that's a typo, passenger vans and cargo vans when they become commercially available, which it doesn't seem like that's gonna be anytime soon. Police and fire department administrative vehicles are not exempt and must meet fuel efficient requirements. Um, Madam Administrator. One item about yeah. that is I would argue that our chief's vehicles are not necessarily administrative because at least the fire chief mm -hmm. responds in that vehicle to emergency situations. Isn't but that is one question that came up. I don't know what a Tahoe weighs, but I believe... Mr. Commissioner. Yeah. Can you share mm -hmm. the fuel efficiency ratings with these two? Because I am a car guy. Yes. So, so I tell you if that's attainable. And but. this is still a draft. So that's good. So, um... Two-wheel drive car, 29 miles per gallon. This is from 2010. Two-wheel drive car, 29 miles per gallon. Four-wheel drive car, 24 miles per gallon. Two-wheel drive minivan, 20. Four-wheel drive minivan, 18. Two-wheel drive pickup truck, 17. Four-wheel drive pickup truck, 16. Two-wheel drive SUV, 21. And a four-wheel drive SUV, 18. And by today's standards, I feel these are pretty yeah, low. I, I would concur. Those are all attainable. You can buy those vehicles without practice. And, it's not, and so. Chiefs Tahoe probably is fairly close to that mm -hmm. rating. So oh, really? Yes. It's, yeah. it's the yeah. one that was purchased? Uh, yes. And the car one? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. The new Tahoe's. I didn't know we had an expert here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the new Tahoe's are getting in excess of 20 miles per gallon. Are these uh, MPG's uh, highway or average? Those are, those average. average. It's just combined. So, okay. Combined. And this has the formula for how you would take care of that but I am um, I drive a, a CRV four-wheel drive SUV and I get 30 miles to the gallon oh my god your car is better than my home I'm on Civic. the econ I'm on the econ That's button crazy. and um, you know I don't have a problem I love it so just to I don't know if I said this but the purpose of this policy um, would be to make efficient use of municipal vehicles um, to minimize the cost of town operations to taxpayers to enforce environmentally responsible fleet maintenance, minimize the town's consumption of, an, of natural resources in line with our right to farm bylaw, to protect and preserve the natural environment, and to comply, of course, with the Department of Energy Resources, Green Communities program requirements. I will also uh, mention that in addition to having three requirements already towards becoming a green community, the town did vote to pass the stretch energy code, so my understanding would be the town wants to become a green community and this is part of that. Would this prohibit us from recycling vehicles like we do now? If it's not meeting the um, required? Yes. Yep. Correct. It would. So we couldn't no longer have the police department. Well, but eventually, they, well, the police is exempt. Yeah, but, but once they but recycle like, the yep. vehicle and it becomes uh -huh. another town department's vehicle, yeah. You would need to comply, yeah. so we wouldn't be able to do that anymore. Yeah, my but, thought would be we should comply. But we're we're able to purchase a used vehicle as long as it complies yes. with the which, yes. which I think which I think they're pretty low. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
I, I think those those values are easily attainable, mm -hmm. whether it be a new or used vehicle. So, so the answer, select and rule out, is no. We wouldn't be able to take hand me downs anymore. We would actually have to go out and purchase a vehicle that would meet these ratings. Mm -hmm. Which, Which I supply. <laughs> one of them because it is on its last leg. So, and well, that another item yeah. is uh, I believe military surplus is out as far as this is concerned, mm -hmm. but we haven't had great experience with that in the last handful of years. Does so. it exclude all diesels? No. It sure. depends on the weight because anything, again, under 8,500 pounds has to comply. Right. Yep. Right. But the new diesels that are in that lower light class limit are exceeding almost 30 miles per gallon right now. So. Oh my God. Two will buy Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anything, I, obviously I drafted this and then you edited it, so I don't have any questions. Um, anything else, my colleague? Is this something we're going to vote on tonight or just a draft that would uh, General? Well, digest? Well, so my suggestion would be we need to move on it only because of time. A, we just moved to bi-weekly meetings, so if we got, try to read this thing three times and then vote on it, we'll be into December. We need to get this approved before we even go to the school committee, which it sounds like we're on their agenda. This August is on 14th. their agenda. Yeah, August 14th. Um, so We have the 1st and the 8th to devote to this, mm -hmm. if you'd like. So if that would tonight's be the time. first reading. That would give us the other two, because we, we have a policy about policies. Yeah, so oh, three readings. read it tonight, read it, and then the third it, yes. would be that week. Read okay. it and vote on so it. So we're meeting every week. All right. Should I I'll start? read it if you'd I, like. Thank you. I, you know, okay. <laughs> I'm in a talkative mood today. Okay, Thank fuel you. efficient vehicle policy. Background, the town of Dighton is seeking a green community designation and through this policy pledges to reduce fuel consumption and energy use by only purchasing fuel efficient vehicles to meet this goal. Purpose and applicability. To establish a requirement that the town of Dighton purchase only fuel efficient vehicles for municipal use whenever such vehicles are commercially available and practicable. Further, this policy is adopted in order to make efficient use of municipal vehicles, minimize the cost of town operations to taxpayers, enforce environmentally responsible fleet maintenance, minimize the town's consumption of natural resources, to protect and preserve the natural environment, and to comply with the DOER Green Communities Program requirements. This policy shall apply to all departments of the town of Dighton. Definitions, combined city and highway MPG, uh, EPA combined fuel economy, this com is, this means the fuel economy from driving a combination of 43% city miles and 57% highway miles and is calculated as follow follows and there's just a numerical formula that shows combined fuel economy equals 1 over 0.43 divided by city miles per gallon plus 0.57 divided by highway miles per gallon. Drive system, the manner in which mechanical power is directly transmitted from a vehicle's drive shaft to the wheels. The following codes are used to indicate drive systems. AWD, all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, automatically controlled by the vehicle's powertrain system. 4WD, four-wheel drive, drive selectable, four-wheel drive with two-wheel drive option. 2WD, two-wheel drive, two-wheel drive only. Heavy duty vehicle, a vehicle with a manufacturer's gross vehicle weight rating of more than 8,500 pounds. Guidelines. All departments shall purchase only fuel efficient vehicles for municipal use whenever such vehicles are commercially available and practicable. The Town of Dighton will maintain an annual vehicle inventory for all municipal vehicles and maintain a plan for replacing non-exempt vehicles with vehicles that meet, at a minimum, the fuel efficient ratings contained in the most recent Criterion 4 guidance published by the Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources Green Communities Division. The fuel efficiency ratings contained therein are based on the most recently published U.S. Environmental Protection Agency data on combined city and highway MPG for vehicles. Based on 2010 data, vehicles must have a combined fuel economy no less than the following. Two-wheel drive car, 29 miles per gallon. Four-wheel drive car, 24 miles per gallon. Two-wheel drive minivan, 20 miles per gallon. Four-wheel drive minivan, 18 miles per gallon. Two-wheel drive pickup truck, 17 miles per gallon. Four-wheel drive pickup truck, 16 miles per gallon. Two-wheel drive SUV, 21 miles per gallon. Four-wheel drive SUV, 18 miles per gallon. Note, hybrid or electric vehicles in these classes will meet these criteria. Green Communities Criterion 4 Guidance, criteria 4 guidance must be checked for updates prior to purchasing new vehicles. 
Exemptions. The following vehicles for municipal use are exempt from this policy. Heavy duty vehicles. Examples include fire trucks, ambulances, and some public work trucks that meet this policy's definition of heavy duty vehicle. Police cruisers, passenger vans, and cargo vans. Fuel efficient models are not currently available for these vehicles. However, we commit to purchasing fuel efficient policy cruiser. Police? There it is. <laughs> Fuel efficient police cruisers, passenger vans, and cargo vans when they become commercially available. Police and fire department administrative vehicles are not exempt, that's not exempt, and must meet fuel efficient requirements. To purchase a new or replacement vehicle for municipal use under one of these exemptions, the department slash division staff responsible for fleet management and or fleet procurement must request an exemption approval by the Board of Selectmen. Inventory. The following information shall be included in a vehicle inventory list and said list shall be updated on an annual basis and provided to the state's Green Communities Division. Model, make, model year, month slash year purchased, drive system, meaning two wheel drive, four wheel drive, or all wheel drive. Is it a heavy duty vehicle, exempt or non-exempt? Miles per gallon rating, vehicle function. Note, departments may use EPA combined miles per gallon estimates or actual combined miles per gallon. Fuel efficient vehicle replacement plan. All non-exempt vehicles shall be replaced with fuel-efficient vehicles that adhere to the most recent Green Communities Criterion 4 guidance. Vehicles shall be replaced when they are no longer operable and will not be recycled from one municipal department slash division to another unless the recycled replacement vehicle meets the fuel efficiency ratings outlined in this policy. In addition, when replacing exempt vehicles, the function of the vehicle will be reviewed for potential replacement with a more fuel-efficient vehicle, including a fuel-efficient non-exempt vehicle. The Town of Dighton will review the vehicle inventory list on an annual basis along with the Green Communities Criterion 4 guidance to plan for new acquisitions as part of planning for the new fiscal year budget. Question, question slash enforcement. To ensure that all vehicle purchases and replacements are consistent with this policy, the Board of Selectmen or its designee shall approve all vehicle purchases to replace any exempt and non-exempt vehicle for municipal use upon consultation with the department staff responsible for fleet management and or fleet procurement. This policy is enforced by the chief administrative officer and or his her designee or designees. So public, uh, we will be reading this next week for our second reading and then August 8th for our third reading and at that meeting uh, we will vote on this one way or the other. And thank, thank you, you for um, editing it as Absolutely. well. I appreciate that. All right. Appointments. Agenda item 8C. Uh, first, uh, we did have uh, Jennifer Louise um, rescind her appointment to the IT committee, so we're going to uh, discuss appointing David Marvel, uh, also on cable television committee, to the IT committee. Uh, I guess I'll start this. I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, Dave is our tech guru uh, <laughs> down <laughs> in cable. Um, and I think he would be a, fant a natural fit on this uh, committee. Thank you, Dave, for volunteering. Mr. <laughs> Chairman, I move that we appoint David Marble to the IT committee. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, congratulations and thank you again, Mr. Marvel. Thanks, David. Just a point on that. Once the scope of services is and all, and all the procurement is complete on the network administrator thing or administration, I was planning on asking the IT committee to meet and review it with me and make a recommendation for you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, Glad can to I have make a, this is off topic, so I'm just going to make this comment and we can move on. I was been thinking a lot about network administration and I, I hope when you go to look into hiring a, a company, please ask if there would be someone there that could be dedicated because it gets tough if, you know, the town clerk calls and she gets Joe and then um, town treasurer calls and she gets Sam right. and they're saying two different things. So just a, a little bit of continuity. Absolutely. I think that's what we need. And one of my preferences is that they're available to be on site Perfect. without many hoops to jump through. Perfect. We just don't want to be in a situation where we are with our current vendor. Completely agree. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <Can't play podcast. laughs> That's in the works. Right? <laughs> I'm very... <laughs> so uh, under 8C, number two, 
rescind appointment of Samantha Turgeon uh, from the Agricultural Commission. And just so the public knows, um, Ms. Turgeon had, um, we had had a discussion um, and so she decided to rescind um, her appointment. Um, Did based she on resign? A, she, yeah. She sent me it. She it says rescind on here because I don't believe she was ever she um, never likes, sworn in. So that's she's, true. she's not in there. <laughs> she so oh, okay. <laughs> but she did, she stated her intention right. to right. not serve on the committee. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I move that we rescind the appointment of Samantha Turgeon to the Agricultural Commission. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and the motion passes. Okay, number 8C, number 3, the reason why that's on the agenda tonight is my interpretation of the Warren article that created, that passed and then we established the Agricultural Commission, it says that the Board of Selectmen shall appoint somebody from this uh, board to serve on the Agricultural Commission in a non-voting capacity. Did you have the same, Madam Administrator, impression? It sounds to me like we have to. The word shall Correct. means you have to. Yeah. Yes. So we do have to do that. So we don't necessarily have to fill Miss Turgeon's uh, spot as a non-voting member, but we do have to appoint someone from the board. Now, I'm not going to well, volunteer I already, anybody. I already have a candidate. But there's only <laughs> one person, although you, you come from a farming background. We, we've had that discussion. I do not. I've lived on a farm. I know you have farm animals. I'm looking at you. So. <laughs> what great candidates we have. Mr. Chairman, I, I make a motion that this board appoint Brett Zagrafis to this commission because, because when we were going for our CCC certification, each member of the board, this is just surplus, superfluous, Karen. The motion is to appoint him. <laughs> but I want to explain to people that... Um, the Agricultural Commission was Brett's baby. Mine was stormwater. The other one was open space. And he was commended by the Lieutenant Governor because it was the only town in the Commonwealth out of 300 at that point that had made the suggestion as an Agricultural mm -hmm. Commission as a best practice. And since you're a non-voting member, I don't think you're going to be tied up all the time. No. But anyhow, <laughs> I'm just in recognition of what you did uh, you. as far as getting the certification approved. Mm -hmm. We were true to our word. So the motion is to appoint Mr. Zagrafis to be the non-voting member. I will second, I second that motion. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing well, do none. Do you have any farm anim animals? Uh, do you consider a cat a farm animal? Absolutely not. I do not. We're going to get pigs. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to no share No more them. than three, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, let's take it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. I would just like to request that we do item 8H, Review Cemetery Commission Fees, because Mr. Ferry it's is It's getting late. Absolutely. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we take uh, agenda item 8H out of order. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. Uh, Superintendent Ferry, thank you for being patient and not throwing anything at me. Uh, so we ha are going to review cemetery commission fees. I'm not, I'm not chairing. Um, it's going to be a back the recommendations. Uh, we, we review the prices from time to time. Uh, there's a few things on the prior one that's a little confusing for the town clerk right now. We wanted to bring it up to date, adjust the prices a little bit, and make it a little bit more clearer. Uh, there is a couple questions. Uh, number one, how, how does we proceed? Do you guys need to read it three times? No. 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 This is just a changing of a price. This isn't necessarily like a, po a policy. All fees just have to be voted on. That's all this is. The other question was, um, we don't have a large volume of internments. Uh, when the needs arise, mm -hmm. we, we make some phone calls now so we don't keep a contract on an excavator. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to continue doing that? They brought up the discussion of possibly having a highway pump do it. So that would be 
I would say that would be your decision. Do you have a recommendation? Or does the commission? The commission wants to entertain it, yes. But I came up with a price. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm going to refrain from my opinion on it. I understand. Uh, presently, we're, we are doing the veterans on during working hours. Uh, they would pay a fee if it's a Saturday or a holiday. Or well, after hours, you know, after hours, they would have to accommodate a fee. But during working hours, we can accommodate uh, those needs for the veterans only. Um, if we open it up to the other cemeteries, the, the figure we have with the going rate of equipment rental and manpower. It'll be 975. Okay. I should point out that I'm a member of the uh, Cemetery Commission also, mm -hmm. and I'm a total in favor of uh, what's being uh, proposed here, that the highway department uh, be the ones to excava excavate for the, uh, for the different graves, and I'm in total mm -hmm. agreement with the prices. We had a lengthy discussion about this. Um, so the prices have changed a little bit. Yep. So I'm not sure if we, uh, we probably should discuss that. Madam, um, Madam Administrator, did you have any thoughts, any opinions, recommendations? Regarding the DPW, yep. um, I kind of go back and forth, but I think the part of what makes Dayton so charming is that everyone just sort of pitches in and gets what's done, and I really love that about this community. Mm -hmm. um, as long as the cost is not incurred by the town and it's not done on town time, it's done separately, um, not an overtime situation, and I know that they'll handle it. Of course. If it's how I have a standard of. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm okay with it. All right, Gula. Uh, I just had a question. Are the rates that are being proposed here, are these similar <laughs> to what people would pay in a private cemetery? Yes. It's, it's a little cheaper than some, right? It's spot on with others. Mm -hmm. I do need to, I'm not sure what you're holding there. Mm -hmm. I did pick up an area while I was sitting here. Mm -hmm. There, there it does not show on the veteran cemetery a non veteran spouse cremation, and that would be 350 also. Non veteran spouse cremation, 350? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Perry. We would add, also add language uh, prices subject to change, and we'd like to have an effective date of September 1st. Uh, there just seems to be a small communication problem in Veteran Cemetery. So if we have this effective cemetery uh, September 1st, mm -hmm. if these are not created by that time moving forward, we have an instrument to work on. Why are these the only two cemeteries listed? Uh, the top portion would be town-wide. Uh, most actively is the Riverside Cemetery. Uh, we did this year do a, a burial on West Lane Cemetery, number 42 on our look map, uh, the town owned park. Uh, out of the 53 or 54 cemeteries we have, uh, Riverside one is the most active one right now. And obviously the veteran cemetery is for the veteran situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So the top portion would be town wide. Uh, they would have to have a reason, you know, either a family connection or a family, you know, other reasons to go non. Riverside area. Mm -hmm. At this time, we're using the Riverside. All right. I, I'm just. I'm not thinking of the small private or. I'm not thinking of the small cemeteries in town. So I'm thinking about West Dayton, Riverside, Veterans is covered separately. Um, so that, that top price would cover town wide, no matter what cemetery. Anything except the Veterans Cemetery. Correct. And the Unitarian uh, Cemetery, which is a private cemetery. Yes, the big community church. Why don't we use the cemetery on Elm Street? Um, we can entertain that. Um, I know a portion of it is meant for if somebody passes away or a body is in town found and right, there is and no family. Exactly. Right. And our uh, other thought presently. That was handed off to us as I'm a fairly new member. I, I don't know how many years I've been there on a committee. I think only 20. Um, what was handed on to me was that was if we ever needed a mass grave, that's where we could use if we had that situation. Terrifying thought. I mean, thank you for planning ahead. Yeah. I don't that's, that's think really any other time. I don't think any other But uh, along with that, 
the last calendar year, uh, the Cemetery Commission with a, a local vendor used that ground penetrating sonar, and we, the newer cemetery that we adopted on Center Street, Brick Street Cemetery, we did that, and we, we found that there's quite a bit of room at the end there also. So if we were to entertain that one way part of Elm Street, we, I'm sure we would want to do that first. Because they could be. So Briggs and Center Street is like, a t that's a town cemetery? Yes, we took that on, uh, I think, five years ago. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. So the cemetery on Elm Street you're talking about is the one where the town uh, first meeting? Yes, the Steep okay. Hill. I just yeah. happened coincidentally walk that cemetery last week because there's somebody going to the Winslow Davis Muse uh, Museum who's, uh, whose family built the house and he thought maybe his, uh, some of his family was there so I was looking for a grave. So those graves are in different areas so we, we definitely would have to check to see what's vacant. So there's old graves here, then there's a big space. And are they unmarked? There, there is some unmarked, there is some what appears to be a local presence, you know, before pre-colonial time. Mm -hmm. Nathaniel Fisher, the first uh, minister, first reverend of the town, is uh, buried at this place. Oh, but if somebody yeah. wanted to buy one of these, these would be the rates. I, I know a single grade lot it would be a thousand dollars. Is that right? Okay, well, I understand. Any additional questions, colleagues? Madam Administrator? I'm good. Mr. I'm Commission? No. Okay. Sutton so Gular? All right, I will entertain a motion. So, yeah, Mr. President. Time, Absolutely. I don't know if it's on that. Uh, this, all the sales, all the monies for the sales. Yes, it is on it. Yeah. 100%. That's another thing that's going to be different. 100% will go towards perpetual care. Yes. They help build that up. Mm -hmm. It is important to note. Thank you, Superintendent Ferry. Um, is there anything special that covers that because it's a receipt of the town? Is there special legislation that allows that? There's special legislation how to spend it. I'm not sure about your question you just asked. I think you mean a revolving account, yes. No, what I'm saying is DOR regs, they just sent a blurb out about this. Unless it's specially designated, all revenue coming into the town goes into the general fund estimated receipts. It ends up in the pot. So we know that there can be receipts that are designated for special purposes. So my only question is, do we know for sure that the proceeds from the sale of lots specifically can go to the perpetual care account? That's all I'm saying. That's a very good question, probably from Mary. Or Sue Jen. for. It, was, it would have been designated at town meeting, I'm assuming. If it well, I don't know, but, but the account again would be Jen. And the thing I read, the blurb that came out was like a refresher that came out, and it was talking about uh, receipts, town receipts. And everything, unless specifically designated, goes into the estimated receipts, which ends up general uh, fund mm -hmm. and free cash, that, ho that whole thing. And when I was just reading that, that was my thought, perpetual care. Because normally perpetual care is paid for by the family of the, who owns the grave or the lots. And you, you give money to the, whether it's the town or you give it to the cemetery commission. But it, in the town reports, they used to list all of those. And they may still do it. All of the perpetual care lots, all right? So, I'm just wondering if the general sale of a grave can be used for that because normally if I bought a grave and there was an interment, it would be understood I'm putting money into this also for perpetual care. So the question is, if you sell lots, wait a minute, what about all those people that put money into those special perpetual care accounts? So we just got to work out the kinks or find out if there are any. Right. If it's the an last exempt time account. we did the price uh, adjustment, we, I believe it was a 60-40 split. 60% mm -hmm. went to perpetual, 40 went to a receipt reserve account that Jen set up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that, I, I, I really want that ironed out before an official vote. Oh, exactly. Unless, unless you can vote pending. Contingent upon. Yeah. And if you, if you say, now you're saying 100% of the proceeds would go to perpetual care. So there's... Um, question there. The other thing, do we have provisions if, if a family 
if you have an identified person that needs to, that has passed and the family can't afford it does the town have a policy to provide the service I mean if you can't pay you can't pay you know what I mean as far as the policy you know, I would assume it's the same as, as you consider the inland spilling this board, this board is the only one that can wash it yep. uh, we would base it on recommendation after all mm -hmm. means of claiming the money has been expensive that obviously a deed needs to be done and it will be dealt with and then um it sounds because like the veterans cemetery that was set up in the beginning if you are a veteran you're entitled and you wish to be buried in that cemetery there is no cost you know for the lot and all that mm -hmm. so my only thought is if you're not a veteran and you you're from a needy family you know no insurance no anything okay. um but you want to be buried in dighton is there a provision? That's all my thought was. It sounds to me like what would have to happen is similar with when Chief McGee mm. sent us like a recommendation. I guess the cemetery that, that commission same policy, correct, would send us a recommendation. Place, but we would have to exhaust all the other yep. means first. Okay. And we would on a case by case so basis. So you do have decide. a policy. It would be it would be coming to you, I, and also like if there's somebody who's not claimed, like there's no family. Well, that's and you don't we already know, know about where, that. Okay. But I no, I'm I'm just thinking of a needy family. Yes. I don't know if we have a policy. Maybe we need to that's have a policy. That's something we can work on. We are the policy. <laughs> Add it to the list. Right? So, yeah, I have a little post-it. It's faded in the sunlight. It's <laughs> okay. Just a thought. Okay. Any further discussion. All right, I'm entertaining motions. I do understand this motion would have to be contingent upon what we just discussed, so um, any motions? Um, I will make a motion that we approve the new rates for graves as presented and that uh, contingent on further vetting. DOR, and that right? we approve the uh, proposed um, use of proceeds uh, contingent on um, checking statute. It's, it's, if it's a statute, Jen's going to know about it. Mm -hmm. And since you've got a 60-40 policy, the only thing we have to know is can it be 100% mm -hmm. instead of 60-40. Mm -hmm. Okay. Am I permitted to second this motion? Uh, Being I can step historic. Down. I, I'm I, happy to step down and second it. I'll step down just to avoid yep, anything, yep. Uh, appearance of whatever. I'm going to happily step down and second this motion. Discussion? Hearing none, let's take it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Did you vote? I wasn't sure I could even vote on it. Do you want to so just abstain? You can abstain. Yeah, it's going to pass. Yeah, okay. abstain. All right. Uh, the ayes have it. The motion passes. You waited and you were rewarded, Mr. Ferry. <laughs> Thank you very much, we sir. Have to tell him, Thank you. We have to tell him no. No. I don't think we tell him no. You trust him. Okay. We are going to get back on track here. And under new business, the next item agenda is sign warrant for the state primary election. Uh, Madam Administrator, did you have anything uh, nope. that you wanted to We're say about this? We're having a primary. We need to sign the warrant. Uh, I think it's September fourth. Good, Good, Good night. Thanks. Thank Thanks thank for you. coming. Thank you. Both. This is fourth day the, of September. That's right. This is the primary for the state election, mm -hmm. and um, I think everyone knows this, but just in case. Uh, polls are 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Dighton Elementary School for both precincts one and two, and. Do you, you normally read what is up for election, right? So this is a senator yes. of Congress, the governor, the lieutenant governor, attorney general, secretary of state, treasurer and receiver general, the auditor, representative in Congress, counselor for the first district. I suppose I should read their district. Um, senator in general court for the first Plymouth and Bristol district, representative in general court, fifth Bristol district, district attorney for Bristol County, um, or Bristol District, it says. Clerk of Courts, Bristol County, Register of Deeds, Bristol Northern District, and County Commissioner, Bristol County. All right. Uh, when 
We set the date for the special town meeting in August. This was considered this. because Absolutely. I know there's We guidelines. went uh, right down to Pam, yep. and she made the call before anybody else was contacted. <laughs> Uh, we had a handful of dates, and the 21st was the one that worked for everybody. So, yes, we Very good. fully vetted. Any further discussion? All right. Accepting motions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we sign the warrant for the state primary election as presented. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <clears throat> the ayes have it. Motion passes here, our selectmen will are. We're gonna give wait just one second. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is to sign the contract for Weston and Sampson to conduct environmental studies. And before we discuss this, I need to ask you, is the word sign there specifically, did we already, like I know this was approved at town meeting, do we need to vote or do we just sign it? You should vote. Okay. You should vote because mm -hmm. it would ratify everything because it was executive. Sure. We should vote to uh, um, approve and sign the contract. Yes. Okay. Because we, we approve the money at sure. town, meeting. Um, town meeting. I'm going to ask my colleague, Selectman so Gulak, did you, before we even vote on this, did you have anything you wanted to say about it? No. Uh, this is just the, the next step that we need to take as far as uh, uh, we have approval. We have the funding for the environmental studies for the land that's being offered to us as a gift from AstraZeneca. So, um, Chairman, yeah, yeah. Uh, just select my Pacheco, do you have anything? Yeah, right? I moved up pretty quick. Up. First you try to take my desk away. <laughs> I become chairman. I can't even upgrade it. <laughs> uh, the contract expires on June 30th. Do we think we're going to have this done for our next annual town meeting so that we can vote on whether or not to accept it? I'm just concerned that about that date. Whole. Yeah. Uh, does it? Uh, I wanted to. No, ask. The, the, con the date of the contract, we keep it within the fiscal year. And quite so, frankly, we want it done before then. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was my point. So. Yes. Do you yes. know so how we, long we're okay. Yeah. Do you just have any idea about Eight environmental weeks. studies? Eight, well, oh, okay. not really. I was told this. Yeah. I, that I, said, I don't know them. <laughs> um, so, eight weeks about for the first phase. They want to start in September and Octo or October. So, we won't be approaching the town at the fall town meeting. Um, but I do believe we'll have some indication annual. of what's going on at the oh, annual. Okay. Okay. Like, so, okay. we'll be able okay. to take care of that mm -hmm. if it comes to that. But. Um, and if anything comes up that is going to carry over, all we do is amend the contract dates because mm -hmm. the money is still here. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And they signed it. So it's just... Do um, you have that version, Madam Administrator? It came over electronically, and um, oh, okay. so it's an electronic so signature on their part, but okay. this will be our original. It will be with the town accountant. I'll have a scanned copy. We'll send it over, and we'll so be... So that's the original of this? Nope, in your hand. Okay. Okay. The, yeah, the vote yep. tonight is to vote to authorize... To allow, authorize to me to sign to it, correct? To approve the contract and okay. authorize you to sign it for the, the town. I read through it. Um, I'm not quite sure who put this together, but whoever did, I'm assuming it's you. Nope, Nancy Guler. So excuse me, pardon me. Fantastic. I, I can't take Fantastic. credit for the short <laughs> form or the long form. Um, oh, I thought you did this. When, I did. Oh, okay. But when we talked about the need for this, mm -hmm. I went back to the stuff I used at UMass. Mm -hmm. and pretty much changed everything from the Commonwealth University yep. to the town of Dighton. And um, th there's even references in there to mm -hmm. um, um, if we hired somebody to do some work, like write the town book, mm -hmm. and there are copyright things or there's protection of data or research, and some people would say, but your rent and space, why is it in there? We'd say, don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Read the part that says what you're going to do and how much you're getting paid. That's all you have to agree to. The rest of it is boilerplate. So then um, we gave the short one and the long one mm -hmm. to Attorney Gate. He said, perfect. So that's, okay. that's why we've done right. it. That was my next question. <laughs> I have just so a, it's basically uh, a state contract. I have a procedural question. I understand, you know, we, we changed the procurement thing. Great. Um, are we running? Con are we still running contracts by the town account? I know we don't ha have to. Are, we, are they run by you? 
Um, so this is, as like Miguel said, a, a boilerplate. So what I'm just speaking with this more in general. In general. Yeah. Um, I mean, what I'm in charge of procurement. I don't know of anybody that's going oh. out and doing it themselves. And mm -hmm. yeah. the the whole town is operated on this. Uh, if you do yeah. five thousand, it's a mm -hmm. short form, and if you do more than that, it's mm -hmm. a long yeah. form. So everyone's been using this. Mm -hmm. yeah. The funny thing about this, though is that there were some just silly typos instead of like or it was of or yeah. whatever um so that was caught and i have since changed my template because i go in there i just take the file mm -hmm. and i change out the names i add attachment a which is usually whatever the scope of services is and um you know i'm on my merry way and so there were some things in there so I know that people use it. I've, yeah. you know, Karen does it, and um, most of the, all of the procurement really is going through me right now. Um, so I do see all of it. And the other thing, that, oh, just to address the signature, yeah. additional town signature. The reason that that's on there is because, at the state level, um, the short form contract didn't need an additional um, review. Mm -hmm. um, in our use, um, if it exceeded a certain amount depending that there were levels of, pro of approval, that would be signed by the director of procurement in Amherst, or if it hit a certain threshold, the president of the university had to sign it, okay? So anyone who did these knew, okay, so if it's this amount, it goes to Jake, and mm -hmm. if it's this amount, it goes to the president's office, because mm -hmm. it gets an additional review. Mm -hmm. So that can be anybody the town designates, because in the past, it did go to Jen. Okay, mm -hmm. and there are certain things the town accountant has to do about contracts, Absolutely. blah, 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 um, that don't involve procurement but involve actual contracts that the town enters. So, Mr. Chairman, I will make a motion that we approve the contract for Weston and Sampson to conduct environmental studies at a total cost of Where's the total cost? Sixty-eight thousand five hundred. Sixty-eight thousand five hundred dollars, and to authorize the chairman to sign it. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. The ayes have it. The motion passes, and I just wanted to thank you oh, you're for welcome. taking that ball and running with it. Absolutely. And for answering the tough questions at the town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was that was something that was really, really important. Absolutely. I, I felt We that felt was, very strongly about yes. the yep. need. We, <laughs> when we read what AstraZeneca gave us as like what our liabilities would be with the land if we took the donation, yeah, we knew we knew My eyes this were was like, gonna be needed. Um, <laughs> I don't know what we're signing up for. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, moving right along, we're going to get on this second page in a moment. Uh, <laughs> we, we're going to sign. We're going to si dabbled over there already. <laughs> we're going to sign the VADAR contract for tax collection and financial software. And with that, I'm going to uh, give the floor to Madam Administrator. Yes. If there's anything you want us to say, just if you remember, this is that grant that the town was awarded, the IT grant. This is converting the sewer commissioners, their billing and accounting software, over to VADAR to be more consistent with the town. This is really a helpful thing to the town because of the way liens go out, demands. It's also helpful for the public because they're, you know, having one billing system, um, which will be helpful going forward. So the when we presented this to the sewer commission, they did ask that if they went over to VADAR and we received this grant, there is a, um, a an annual cost associated with using VADAR and it's much more than what they were using, but the service is better. Correct. Uh, but they did ask that the town take a look at indirect costs mm -hmm. in exchange for that. So like a subsidy or not a subsidy, it? but look down at the breakdown and reassess it um, and take into account that they. Yeah. took on this kind of added burden, if you will, of extra cost for a benefit that the town side is realizing. And so that's, that's during totally, the budget. I think that's totally reasonable because, and I, I have not seen the figures, so I'm not going to commit to anything, right. but I think that's very reasonable. And part of the reason is because they're helping us synchronize the software that we're using right. between multi-departments. And, and I think lessening that that's how much work needs to be done by our staff and the treasurer collector's right. office for checking and and it, it is a help for the town yep. so and I'm we appreciate that yes, commission thank you do we know how much money is involved with this amendment 
the grant. No, the amendment. Uh, so is the whole, the whole this grant is going to be spent on the amendment? Yes, we actually had to get their quote and send that in. So okay. this includes, it's about, I can't remember now, I think it's 19,000, but some change. And it includes data migration in addition mm -hmm. to the software. Five or seven years. So we think it's 19,000? 19,000, 19, is it right there? Yes. Yep, $19,043.50. Oh, I missed, I was so close. You were so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chairman. We'll hold that to you. We'll hold you I move you. that we uh, approve the amendment to the VADAR agreement uh, in the amount of, uh, for additional services, in the amount of $19,043.50 grant funded and authorize Chairman of the board to sign it. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and the motion passes. Just one second. I have to do this now because we're going to get out. It's going to be like 3 a.m. and I'm not going to want to <laughs> sign know, That's this. the drawback to these bi-weekly meetings is because you yeah, have this meeting is like clunk. <laughs> and I hope the public does understand that, that if, well, we are second and fourth Wednesday now, um, just please expect when we do have a meeting, it's not going to be 50 minutes. It's just, I don't even know what's going to be on the next agenda. It's going to be longer, so. Well, the um, thing tonight is they we can also watch it in peace. But you get too, to see right? us less. They can, but they can watch it in piecemeal. Like, <laughs> if they don't watch it all tonight, they can catch Absolutely. part of it. If they can the watch it on YouTube, it, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I was. I mean, this is this is not indicative of a real meeting. I mean, we had the very lengthy discussion with the school department. Correct. So it was a presentation. Right. I get it. I'm glad they came. Me too. We definitely appreciate that. And next on the agenda, uh, last for new business is a road opening permit for Dighton Water District. Um, we did receive a piece of correspondence from the Dighton Water District dated July 10th, 2018. Ooh, right, right before, the day before our last meeting. To the Board of Selectmen, the Dighton Water District in accordance with Chapter 359 of the Acts of 1950 is hereby notifying the Board of Selectmen its intent to enter upon a town road located at Lot 3 Main Street. The purpose of this excavation is to install a new water service at this location. Sincerely, Kahal O'Brien, Dighton Water District. Now, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, grant a request for a road opening permit at Lot 3 on Main Street from the Dighton Water District to install a new service. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The, the ayes have the motion okay. passes. Okay. <laughs> yes, right. you are correct. Okay, <laughs> They'll have... Please change your uh, letterhead, Dighton Water District. <laughs> Need to be updated. Okay, correspondence. Uh, we received on July 10th, 2018, a piece of correspondence from the Massachusetts State Lottery Commission. Dear sir or madam, the Massachusetts State Lottery is offering, offering a Kino monitor to existing Kino to go agents in your city slash town to, disp to display the game at their location. In accordance with MGL Chapter 10, Section 27A, as amended, you are hereby notified of the lottery's intent to install a monitor at the following location in your community, the new FastMart 420 Somerset Ave, North Dighton. If you object to these agents receiving a monitor, you must do so in writing within 21 days of receipt of this letter. Please address your written objection to Carol Ann Frazier, General Counsel, Legal Department, Massachusetts State Lottery Commission, 60 Columbian Street, Braintree, Mass, 02184. Should you have any questions regarding this program or any other issues relative to the lottery, please call me at 781-849-5555. I look forward to working with you as the lottery continues its efforts to support the 351 cities and towns of the Commonwealth. Sincerely, Michael R. Sweeney, Executive Director. So I guess what I would ask my colleagues is, do we have 
Any objection to these agents? All this is so you can require. I mean, they're required to let you know that a Kino thing is coming in. What's a Kino monitor? It's the t- where you like, see have you ever the game. It's like yeah. right there. Yeah. And you can play Kino. Balls are popping. Yeah. Out. Okay. All right. So we don't have to vote on this. Nope. It's does if anyone you object, have an objection? It's only if you object. And nope. I have no objection. Selectman Goulart. You know, I think we should we should vote to have it on the record. Um, just that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we um, note for the record notice of a Kino monitor installation at New Fast Mart, Somerset Avenue, North Dayton, and that the board has no objections to that installation. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. The motion passes. Announcements. I'm just going to do these very quickly. Uh, they're also on Facebook. The Dighton Fire Association will be hosting the second annual Touch a Truck event on Saturday, September 8, 2018, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the grounds of Mannheim, New England, located at 123 William Street, North Dighton, Massachusetts. And the Dighton Water District has issued a water ban during the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. for irrigation systems. Handheld watering is permitted. And we're going to move. Just what, before that, do we else? have a um, do we have an update on the colonial? Yes, I, as you may know, it was postponed because of weather on Sunday, so it's going to be in the fall. We have, oh, we, you don't have it for a. We date. don't have a date. Oh, it's going to be, in, be the in the fall. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would just to like to announce as a reminder, Saturday, August the fourth is the Pan Mass Challenge Jimmy Fun Bike Ride through Dighton. So all of you folks that line up on. Horton Street and Williams and Center Street. Uh, please be out there to wave and support the riders uh, on the PMC bike ride, please. Thank you, Selectman Goulart. And with that, we're going to move on to Selectman's reports. Um, Selectman Goulart? I have a brief one. Last mm -hmm. Thursday night was the annual meeting to uh, act on the county budget. Uh, the county budget of in excess of $21 million was voted uh, unanimously, and of the $21 million plus uh, in the budget, um, the total assessment to communities in the county is a little over $6 million. The rest of the money will be coming in through various services that they provide. And we reorganized the board, and Joe Pacheco, from selectman from Rainham, is chair. Uh, I was a reappointed clerk, and uh, Skip Vadney from Rehoboth was appointed board member. I think we're well, well represented over there. <laughs> and we kept it with small towns. Absolutely. We like that. We like to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, Selectman Pacheco, did you have anything? No, I don't. You'll do it next week? <laughs> you talking about the Selectman's report? Yeah. Did no, I, other, other than the fact that you and I both attended the school committee meeting uh, last mm -hmm. week, I found it to be informative. Uh, that's why I was in favor of the uh, modules that we agreed upon. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's basically all I have to report. All right. Moving along. Do we have any acknowledgments this evening, Administrative yeah, Assistant Brady? Not. All right. Well, I just yeah. want to acknowledge everyone for keeping on, keeping on. <laughs> They're doing still a great with us. job as <laughs> always <laughs> the, the employees <laughs> and we do have some minutes uh, so I'll entertain a motion can to I, act on the minutes can I just make a comment sure. so I'm throwing a curveball at you so in an effort to kind of better keep track of minutes mm -hmm. and be able to get your feedback um, it won't be like this in the future so I would like them, to, I, I had the suggestion that they be on for accept for review where they would be officially submitted to the Board of Selectmen as draft minutes. You'd have a week or whatever our schedule is to come back with any edits and then they'd be presented to you in that form. You could even at the, at the next meeting say, oh, I don't agree with this, I said this instead mm -hmm. and make it, um, accept it as amended as we did similar to the Soil Conservation Board. Um, so that's why that says accept for review the minutes. I didn't even see it. Thank you. My eyes are tired. It's, okay. it's late. Did, were these sent out to us? I, these look no. familiar. But this oh, is perfect because now we have some time. I, I thought I wrote. I saw it today. Oh. So I'm actually happy to take 
you know, a week and mm -hmm. go through this. This was an important meeting. Uh, the minutes that are being covered. Meeting. Yeah, it was a long, important <laughs> meeting. Um, so I'm actually okay with um, accepting them for review and kind of doing that as the standard practice going forward. So when do they become official? We would vote so on these them. Are, week, right? Well, that, right. If, mm -hmm. if we would we actually the vote to, to accept them. Tonight is to vote to accept them. You all take them and review them. And if you're fine with them, great. If not, provide your um, changes. You can provide those to Karen. You can provide them mm -hmm. to me. And then uh, we can come back at the next meeting and they'll be on there for approval. And that's when they are the minutes. Okay. And then nobody can say they didn't see them or exactly. they didn't. Not that anyone ever has. But we but can also keep track of where they are, who's reviewed them, and the changes who's not, that we and made. The yeah. Okay. I think that's great. Okay. So do you need a motion to Move to accept for review. I'll move to accept the review of the minutes of the regular meeting of July 11th, 2018. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? The only thing I'm going to ask is that Karen take my changes and give you a clean copy because I'm really embarrassed by my handwriting. No. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I thought Selectman Pacheco was a doctor in his past life. I saw his notes last week at the school committee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's okay. I mean, if you don't mind you it, I guess it's not a big deal. I did, because Sorry. I will not remember. I've been hiding my hand all night, but I will not remember I this, saw it, too. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> I didn't But I'm the only one that brought it up. <laughs> it's, it, well, so, it's I'm a the note friend that won't tell you if you have something in your bag. <laughs> I'm the friend that will tell you if you have food. Just so everyone knows, I will look out for you. Okay. Um, sorry. Thank you for oh, it's okay. going on with that process. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. Approval of the warrants. Mr. Chairman, I move that warrant 3A-19 in the amount of $89,909.43 payroll. Warrant 3B-19 in the amount of $63,574.64, accounts payable both dated July 18th, be approved. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. Okay. I'll share the wealth with my colleague. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to approve the warrant. Uh, 4A-19 in the amount of $94,335.46. Should I do 4B, 4C, yep. and 4D yeah. all yeah. at the same time? Yep. Continuing uh, warrant number 4B-19 in the amount of $15,821.02. Warrant number 4C-19 in the amount of $302,830.78 and warrant number 4D-19 in the amount of $3,262.25. Dated July 25th, be approved. Dated July 25th, uh -huh. 2018. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it, and the motion passes. Uh, we don't actually have any more public. We scared them all away. Um, so as chairman, I will entertain a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, exceptions to, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open, e open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation, litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, I do. Uh, and last but not least, number 10, to discuss trade secrets or confidential or proprietary information regarding activities by a governmental body as energy supplier, municipal aggregator, or energy cooperative, if an open session will adversely affect conducting business relative to other entities making, selling, or distributing energy, an open session will not reconvene. So moved. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Roll call vote. Aye. 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 All right. 
Um, so we won't be turning, returning to open session. Cable, thank you so much, and we hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you for being patient. Was that the class?